I actually found uh, Jesus Ayala, Jesus Jimenez, and Jesus Garcia. <laughs> They were all in my cell. And... Tell us who you are. What makes you tick? Being a good mom is very important to me, and a good wife, and a good worker, and being all those things together is not easy. So I'm basically a ticking time bomb. <laughs> and um, I went through a lot of years of, of this kind of hard stuff, and I was going to murder him. I was going to kill him. Like the scriptures say, like Nephi killed it, just to stop the pain and to stop him coming after me and to stop him coming after my children. And welcome back to part two of this crazy case. Lori, Vello, Daybell, and Chad Daybell. I thought I'd start today by reading you the quick, okay, I'll go quickly, nine page indictment just so that you understand the charges that they're facing. And then we work it back from there. Because of course, today we're going to go through all my notes. I've got videos to show you, things that I've prepared. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to see you. Um, please, if you can in the chat, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you can hear me properly, that would be great. Um, otherwise, how do I know if you can hear me or not? I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're enjoying this weekend. I've set the next stream um, in this case for Wednesday. So just set your reminder for that so you don't miss out. I think this is going to be <laughs> a multi-part case coverage. Um, so yes, I just want to make sure. Okay, cool. You can hear. Nine-page indictment. So remember, Lori Valodebal and Chair Debal are going to be tried together. Uh, Chad's attorney did try to <laughs> file a motion to have them tried separately, and the judge said no. So, okay, cool. You guys can hear me. They're going to be tried together. So I'm, I'm putting this on the screen here so that you can see it in the district court of the 7th Judicial District of the state of Idaho in and for the county of Fremont. Okay, we've got uh, state of Idaho plaintiff versus Chad Guy Daybell and Lori Noreen Vallow, a.k.a. <laughs> Lori Noreen Daybell. Chad Guy Daybell and Lori Noreen Vallow are accused by the grand jury of Fremont County by this indictment as follows. Count one. I think the reason I'm also going to read through this is pay attention to what they're being charged with, especially where at the end there. Count one. Conspiracy to commit first degree murder and grand theft by deception, a felony. Idaho Code and a whole bunch of numbers. The defendants, Chad Guy Daybell, Lori Noreen Vallow, and Alex Cox, deceased. Hold on. I want to make sure you can see every single word. So let me just shift it over for you. Ah, okay. They say, and Alex Cox, deceased, and other co-conspirators, both known and unknown, on or between the dates of October 26, 2018, and continuing until January 15, 2020, in the County of Madison, State of Idaho, and elsewhere, including Fremont County, Idaho, and as part of a continuing criminal transaction and common scheme or plan in the Madison and Fremont Counties, Idaho, did willfully and knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree to commit murder in the first degree of Tylee Ryan and to commit, to commit grand theft by deception. 
Um, yes, been following this so long that sadly, did you see what you said there? Yeah, nothing surprising. Okay. So first degree murder of Tylee Ryan. Okay, Tylee was 16, just about to turn 17. Then they say overt acts. In the furtherance of the conspiracy to commit further, uh, murder in the first degree of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception and to affect the objects thereof, one or more of the following overt acts were committed by one or more of the subjects of the conspiracy as part of a continuing criminal transaction and common scheme or plan within Madison and Fremont counties or elsewhere in the state of Idaho. On or between October 26th, pay attention to the dates, got, hope you got your notebooks out, <laughs> On or between October 26, 2018 and June the 9th, 2020, Chad Guy Daybell and Laurie Noreen Vallo did endorse and espouse religious beliefs for the purpose of encouraging and or justifying the homicide of Tylee Ryan. On or about August 16th, 2019, Laurie Noreen Vallo did change the deposit of Tylee Ryan's social security benefits from Tylee Ryan's JP Morgan Chase account to deposit money directly into Lori Noreen Bellows' personal BBVA account. Oh, my word. Three, on or about September 1st, 2019, Lori Noreen Bello did move from Chandler, Arizona to Rexburg, Idaho with Alex Cox, her brother, Tylee Ryan, and Joshua Jackson Bello here in after JJ Bello. If you guys missed part one, I really hope you didn't. I hope you watched part one. But don't worry, we're going to go over all the people in this case. I've made a nice presentation for you, so just hang in there. Um, I just want to get through this indictment so that we all know what are we prepping for? Because this is really kind of like trial prep coverage. That's what we're doing. This is a huge, huge case. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot of moving parts. You know how uh, Lieutenant Superintendent Doug Carter in the Delphi case talks about the case of like this is so many moving parts. It is so complex. I mean, we really thought that this whole Brian Laundry and his family was hectic, but I'm telling you, this case is is even more. So that's why we start with the documents. That's how we roll here on Grizzly True Crime. On or about September 8th, 2019, Chad Guy Daybell Googled SSW, so South Southwest Wind, and visited a website entitled, What is the definition of SSW Wind Direction? <laughs> On or about 9th of September, okay, 2019, Alex Cox did go to 565 Pioneer Road, apartment 175, Rexburg, Idaho. And then on or between September 9th, 2019 and February 1st, 2020, Lori Noreen Vello failed or refused to contact the Social Security Administration as required by law to inform the Social Security Administration of Tylee Ryan's death. On or between September 25th, 2019 and January 22nd, 2020, Lori, Lori Noreen Vallow did wrongfully continue to collect five monthly Social Security super, uh, survivor benefits on behalf of Tidy Ryan. What? Oh, my word. So I wish I could figure out exactly how much money Lori really got in her lifetime from all the, these life insurance and Social Security benefits and things like that. Hmm? Yes, it's a, it's a massive case. Okay, count two. So we've done count one. First degree murder of Tylee Ryan. Count two, first degree murder, a felony. The defendants, Chad Guy Daybell and Lori Noreen Vallow, on or between the 8th and the 9th of September 2019, remember that they took um, Lori and her brother, took Tylee and JJ to Yellowstone National Park on the 8th. So on or between the 8th and the 9th of September 2019, in the county of Madison, state of Idaho, and as part of a common scheme or plan or continuing criminal transaction between Madison and Fremont counties in Idaho, were concerned in the commission of a first degree murder and did aid and abet in its commission, or not being present, advised and encouraged its commission, or by command compelled by another to commit the crime, and did so with malice aforethought, and did so willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation, which resulted in the death of a human being, to wit, did either kill Tylee Ryan, and or assist in the killing of Tylee Ryan, and or did encourage the killing of Tylee Ryan, and or did command another to kill Tylee Ryan, in violation of Idaho Code Sections 18400, whole bunch of numbers, okay? Now, as we know, Tylee Ryan's remains were found on Chad Daybell's property before Laurie was even married to him. How crazy is that? In the pet cemetery, and she had been dismembered 
and burnt. I mean, it's and mostly they were doing this because of their belief systems, I suppose. There's a whole bunch of factors. We can't break down the motive in one sentence here, but uh, they believed that, you know, Tylee and JJ were zombies and all this kind of stuff. Yes. So I am, I will look at your comments afterwards. I just want to focus on this document because we've got so much to cover today. And I've prepared a whole bunch of, you know, presentations as always. And I've got my notes to read to you as well, which I literally hand wrote out. So I'm just going to work through this document. Okay. I'm sorry if I don't see if there's questions right now. But hopefully, for the mods who are here, thank you for being here. If uh, if they can answer questions, or you guys who watch part one, huh? <laughs> hope that you can also. Let me take this banner off for now. Okay, so count three. Conspiracy to commit first-degree murder and grand theft by deception, a felony Idaho code, right? The defendants, Chad Guy, Dave, Laurie, Noreen Bello, and Alex Cox, deceased, and other co-conspirators. Who's that? Uh -huh. Both known and unknown. Whoa. On or between the dates of October 26, 2018, and continuing until January 15, 2020, in the county of Medicine, state of Idaho, and elsewhere, including Fremont County, Idaho, and as part of a continuing criminal transaction and common scheme or plan in the Medicine and Fremont Counties, Idaho, did willfully and knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree to murder in the first degree of seven year old Joshua Jackson Vello, hearing after JJ Vello, and to commit grand theft by deception overt acts. In furtherance of the conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree of J.J. Vallow and grand theft by deception and to affect the objects thereof, one or more of the following overt acts were committed by one or more of the subjects of the conspiracy as part of a continuing criminal transaction and common scheme or plan with Madison and Fremont counties or elsewhere in the state of Idaho. Okay. On or between October 26th, 2018 and June 9th, 2020, Chad Guy Daybell and Lori Noreen Vello did endorse and teach religious beliefs for the purpose of justifying the homicide of JJ Vello. They believed he was a zombie. They labeled him a dark soul. There's actually a leaked document on Reddit which tells you how they rated and like everyone from dark to light. That that is quite scary. We can go. I told you there's lots of things to look at in this case. <laughs> we can go there sometime. Number two, on or about September 1st, 2019, Lori Noreen Vallow did move from Chandler, Arizona to Rexburg, Idaho with Alex Cox, Tylee Ryan, and Joshua, or JJ Vallow, right? Joshua Jackson Vallow. Alex Cox is her brother. On or about September 23rd, 2019, Alex Cox did take possession of JJ Vallow. September 23rd. So we can kind of see, um, you know... Who did what? But okay. On or about, and now he's, he's not around to face the consequences. On or about November 26, 2019, Lori Noreen Vello provided a false and or misleading physical location of JJ Vello to law enforcement during a lawful investigation. On or about uh, or between September 23rd, 2019 and February 1st, 2020, Lori Noreen Vello failed or refused to contact the Social Security Administration as required by law to inform the Social Security Administration of J.J. Vallow's death. On or between the dates of September 9th, 2019 and February 1st, 2020, Lori Noreen Vallow did wrongfully continue to collect four monthly Social Security survivor benefits on behalf of J.J. Vallow and four monthly Social Security child in-care payments. I mean, why? you see why I'm showing you this document? we got to know why should we snark it up? Why should we be angry with these two individuals? Can four, first degree murder, a felony. The defendants, Chad Guy Daybell and Lori Noreen Vello, on or between the 22nd and 23rd day of September 2019 in the county of Madison, state of Idaho, and as part of a common scheme or plan um, or continuing criminal transaction between Madison and Fremont counties in Idaho, was concerned in the commission of a first degree murder and did aid and abet in its commission or, not being present, advised and encouraged its commission, or by command compelled another to commit the crime, and did so with malice of forethought, and did so willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation, which resulted in the death of a human being, to wit, did either kill J.J. Vallow, and or assist in the killing of J.J. Vallow, and or did encourage the killing of J.J. Vallow, and or did command another to kill J.J. Vallow in violation of Idaho Code's numbers, right? And of course, he was trigger warning this content is for adults only remember okay so it is a very hectic case and of course it does involve the murder of two children 
and there's a whole bunch of other people. But the children, ooh, I know that's like a whole another level of upsetting. I mean, JJ was only seven and his body was wrapped in trash bags with a white bag over his head. He was covered in duct tape and he was buried in the backyard on Chad Daybell's property. Oh, my word. So if anyone's feeling overwhelmed, please know that I'm here to help you not feel overwhelmed. I've made a whole bunch of visual presentations that I'm very excited to show you. So just please hang in there. If you are not your, a document type, just hang in there. We're going to look at everything. There's so much to look at um, in this case. Welcome to the winter melon that has good abilities. <laughs> that is so great that you became a member. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. She did not get child life insurance. Yeah, fraud too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so count five, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. That the defendants, Chad Guy Debar, Laurie, Noreen Vello, and Alex Cox deceased on or about October 1st, 2018 to January 15, 2020 in the county, uh, county of Fremont, state of Idaho, and elsewhere, including Madison County and as part of a continuing transaction and common scheme or plan in Fremont County's Idaho that willfully and knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree to commit murder in the first degree. Uh, are you listening? Murder in the first degree of Tamara, Tammy Daybell. Did combine or conspire to commit murder and one or more of such persons didn't act to affect the object of the combination or conspiracy. Chad is uh, Chad, da Chad Daybell, is Laurie's fifth husband. The dude is in here as well, being tried at the same time. Her, his wife, Tammy, well, she died in her sleep. That's what they said. And she was buried. There was a funeral. Then they exhumed her body because they're like, wait a minute. There's too much strange stuff going on here around Lori Vallow Daybell now because they got married two weeks later. Exhumed her body. Did a whole autopsy. Those results have not been publicly released before. However, Chad and Tammy's children have done some interviews. And in it, they said, that she was asphyxiated but they don't believe that her that their dad is guilty which it must be hard to believe that your own dad would do such a thing right so yes so that's tylee ryan jj vallow and tammy daybell that's what the charges they're facing is first degree murder of those three individuals Overt acts in furtherance of the conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree of Tamara Tammy Daybell and to affect the objects thereof. One or more of the following overt acts were committed by one or more of the subjects of the conspiracy as part of a continuing criminal transaction and common scheme or plan within Madison and Fremont counties or elsewhere in the state of Idaho. On or about uh, or between the dates of October 26, 2018 and June 9, 2020, Chad Guy Daybell and Lori Noreen Bello did encourage any spouse religious beliefs for the purpose of justifying and or encouraging the homicide of Tamara Tammy Daybell. If you were listening, unless you were very excited for the stream to start, there was a little clip I put there in the beginning of Lori talking about, you know, the scriptures saying that murder is okay in some instances. I'll play you some of that uh, later as well, The a little bit of a longer clip. On or about September 1st, 2019, Lori Noreen Vallow did move to Rexburg, Idaho with Alex Cox, Tally Ryan, and Joshua Jackson hearing after JJ Vallow. Text messages between Chad and Lori regarding death percentages for Tammy and JJ in messages on July 30th, 2019. What? Death percentages. Oh, my word. Wow. That's way before they were even murdered. Months before. Okay, they died in September 2019. Chad Daybell obtained a burner phone on September 18, 2019. Alex Cox obtained a burner phone on October 9th, 2019. Text messages between Chad Guy Daybell and Laurie Noreen Vello about Tamara Tammy Daybell being in limbo and Tammy being possessed by a spirit named Viola. Can't make this stuff up. September 8th, 2019, Chad Guy Daybell signed application along with Tamara Tammy Daybell to increase her life map insurance to the maximum allowed under her policy. Always a red flag, right? Alex Cox attempted to shoot Tamara Tammy Daybell on October 9th, 2019. There was this incident that she reported to the police of a man in a ski mask standing outside a window shooting at her with a paintball gun. Apparently, it wasn't a paintball gun. 
But okay, Alex Cox conducted multiple internet searches between the dates of October 8th, 2019 and October 12th, 2019, including searches related to Grendel Drop and shooting through a Dodge Dakota. Alex going to the gun range in the months before October 9th, 2019, when the attempted shooting of Tamara Tammy Dable takes place. Alex traveled from Sportsman's Warehouse to the vicinity of the Dable residence on October 9th, 2019. And Alex was in the church parking lot approximately two and a half miles from the Daybell residence on the night of October 18th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Count six, first degree murder. That the defendant Chad Guy Daybell on or about October 18th to 19th, 2019 in the county of Fremont, state of Idaho, was concerned in the commission of a first degree murder and did aid and abet in its commission or not being present, advised and encouraged its commission or by command compelled another to commit the crime and did so with malice of forethought and did so willfully, deliberately and with premeditation, which resulted in the death of a human being to wit did either kill Tamara Tammy Debal and or assist in the killing of Tamara Tammy Debal and or did encourage the killing of Tamara Tammy Debal, his wife of 23 years who he had five children with and or did command another to kill Tamara Tammy Debal in violation of Idaho Code sections and numbers. And then we've got count seven, grand theft felony, that the defendant Laurie Noreen Vallo, on or between the dates of October 1st, 2019 and January 22nd, 20, 2020, in the county of Madison, state of Idaho. We've got two pages left, guys. State of Idaho, yes, okay, focus. As a common scheme or plan or continuing criminal transaction between Madison and Fremont counties, Idaho, by deceit and with the intent to deprive another of property or to appropriate the same to herself or to a third person, wrongfully take, obtain, or withhold, or aid and abet another to take, obtain, or withhold the property of another to wit. Social Security survivor benefits allocated for Tylee Ryan and JJ Vello, and Social Security child in care benefits allocated for Lori Noreen Vello in an amount exceeding $1,000. I first had to look there, like, wait, wait how much? $1,000, which said funds Lori Noreen Vello was not entitled and which did belong to the government of the United States of America. Count eight is insurance fraud. Of course, Chad Daybell collected $430,000 of life insurance after his wife passed away. That the defendant, Chad Guy Daybell, on or about October 19th, 2019 to October 30th, 2019, in the county of Madison, state of Idaho, did with the intent to defraud or deceive an insurer for the purpose of obtaining any money or benefit presented or caused to be presented to an insurer or other person, a statement as part of or in support of a claim for payment or benefit, knowing that such statement contained false, incomplete or misleading information concerning any fact or thing material to such claim to wit, did present and or cause to be presented an insurance beneficiary form to Life Map Assurance Company in violation of Idaho Code section blah, blah, blah. And then we've got count uh, nine, is it? Yes. That the defendant Chad Guy Daybell on or about October 19th, 2019 to October 31st, 2019 in the county of Madison or Fremont County, state of Idaho, did with the intent to defraud or deceive an insurer for the purpose of obtaining any money or benefit present or caused to be presented to an insurer or another per or other person, a statement as part of or in support of a claim for payment or benefit knowing that such statement contained false, incomplete, or misleading information concerning any fact or thing material to such claim to wit did present and or cause to be presented a claimant statement to, what does that say, Primerica Life Insurance Company in violation of Idaho Code Section 41293. True bill presented in open court on this day of May 2021. So that's what they're facing. That is what they're facing. So now I could take this document off. Give me a thumbs up if you like me reading that whole document to you. I just really thought it's important to kick it off for that. Now, knowing what you've just read, okay, they are facing the death penalty. Lori has been in a mental institute for, since so she's been arrested, which was in March 2020. Uh, yeah, and now she's been found competent to stand trial. And so Chad's just really been waiting for her, which is why he's like, can we just be tried separately? And they're like, no, you cannot be tried separately. <laughs> so now finally she's fit to stand trial. They're going to trial together, expected in January 2023 for approximately 10 weeks. So that's what we're getting ready for, okay? That's what we, we're looking at this case. And, you know, I like to deep dive. So now I'm in it. 
I'm in the Velo Ocean. I'm like, damn, there's so much to cover. There's so much to do. And I want to, my, my motive is to help you guys who don't know too much about this case, or maybe you just like have seen some of it, you know, and it's just like, I don't know, because it's such a mess. I know you know it's a mess. If you watched yesterday, you're like, whoa, it's just like all these people. So yesterday's presentation, I wanted to help visually present it. And today I have some more. But now I'm going to show you this little snippet I have of Lori Vallow, okay, talking about how she wanted to murder her third husband, which was Joseph Ryan. And why? Just so that you can understand kind of how her brain works. It's obviously not, um, <laughs> it's not the whole view, believe me. It's just a snippet, okay? I've never seen a case with joint defendants. I know, right? This one makes it so interesting. There's, there's no lack of, there's never a dull moment in this case. Honestly, when you think like, whoa, um, that's shocking. There's something just around the corner that's just more shocking. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's so nice to have you all here. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it as well. Um, I do hope you watched part one. If you didn't, I would highly recommend it because we went slowly through a, the presentation that I put up for you yesterday. Okay, so here's the snippet that I want to show you. Me, I had a, there was a point in my life, there's a changing point in your life, right? You're a member of the church your whole life. I always loved the Lord. There was a training point in my life that turned me to the temple. And this is what I teach everybody. And my change of heart was to the temple. So I had <laughs> I had um, been married to someone who was very awful, who to my children. And um, I had divorced him and gotten away from him. And he had... Sorry, I, bl I blanked out that uh, word earlier, but S8 is the word she's really saying there. Join the church. He spoke in state conference. Everyone thought he was wonderful. He was very good showman of all those things. And after we were divorced, um, he told everybody that I was this lying, crazy Mormon and got up in court and said all these horrible things about me and turned it around to where the judges believed him instead of me and he was constantly trying to get custody of my three-year-old daughter and just to rub it in my face and um, I went through a lot of years of, of this kind of hard stuff and I was going to murder him. I was going to kill him like the scriptures say like Nephi killed him just to stop the pain and to stop him coming after me and to stop him coming after my children and I was just I just thought I couldn't take it anymore. And I would go through the scriptures and find all the things like, if he comes against you once, if he comes against you twice, if he comes against you three times, then you can kill him. It says it in the scriptures. And I'm like, there it is. There's my answer. I don't want to do anything that's wrong. I did not have a murderous heart. I just wanted to stop the bleeding and stop the pain. And so someone wise was speaking to me and said, you need to go to the temple. So I went and met my bishop, and I was like, I'm either going to turn my life to the temple, or I'm going to commit murder. So do you want to give me a temple recommend? <laughs> and I was perfectly honest, because at that point, I had nothing to lose. You get to the bottom rung, and I had nothing to lose. And he gave me my temple recommend. And I started going to the temple every week by myself, not with my current husband, just by myself to the temple, to the Mesa Temple, which I love. Um, we moved here from Texas to get away from my ex-husband that was doing all this, but he moved here like five miles away from us just to continue to torture me. That was his whole entire job. Oh my word. So you've heard it there. So she's really just cherry picking from the scriptures and just saying, oh, well, the scriptures say it. I can murder him because, you know, he's come against me like once, twice. Yeah, no, that's it. He's out. So... You know, I think his family must be absolutely horrified to hear the things, the accusations that not only Lori was making, but I'm not discrediting any victim of SA. Uh, Colby, who you can see pictured uh, right next to me, right, right over here. This was Lori's first son from her second marriage. She's only, yeah, this was a son from her second marriage. William Lagoya is his dad. 
but Joe Ryan adopted him, which is why his name is Colby Ryan. And he said in an interview with Dateline that he was actually essayed. And he said maybe Tylee too. So maybe, I don't know, but it's just, you don't know, with this whole group of people, you just you just don't know, you know? Yes, um, Joe Ryan's sister does have a YouTube channel as well. Um, I will be showing you on my presentation uh, the YouTube channel names and everything in a moment. Okay, so that uh, you were asking where is that clip from? Apparently it was from one of those like recruitment meetings, you know, they were recruiting the 144,000 disciples and someone had recorded it. Huh? Interesting, right? Okay, I just want to close this document. All right, so now I've shown you that. So what I'm going to do is take this off. I'm going to remove it so I don't get confused because I've got so many things to show you. Okay. I think Lori does not realize how gone she is, right? But the thing is that there was a, you know, a psych evaluation activated on her by her fourth husband, Charles Vallow, and she busted with flying colors. So it's almost like she can turn that insanity on and off. It's quite interesting how she can just switch around like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. How many years does Elle expect us to believe she's been in a delusion? Yes. Okay. So as you saw, I have um, a lot of pages of handwritten notes that I've got for you guys, which is the entire, it's, it's a mostly chronological story. I write it all out as I gather all my information. I'm old school like that. So I'm going to be reading some of that to you. And in preparation for that, I have made you this. Okay. Can you see that nicely? Mm, I want to make it that it's like... I just want to see how to make it really nice. Sorry. Sorry. Hmm. It's not bad like that, I suppose. Okay. So... What we have over here is Laurie Bello in the center of all of this, of course. The people in black and white are deceased people all around Laurie Bello. Chad Daybell, of course, is also in color because him and Laurie are, we just read all their charges in that full indictment um, that I literally just read you, okay? So if you're just rolling into the chat now, then please check that out afterwards. So we've got Joe Ryan, okay? He was Laurie's third husband. He died from a heart attack, but it was a very mysterious death, you know, and timing and the way that Laurie collected um, funds for Tylee after his death. Tylee, uh, Tylee Ryan is his daughter. Okay, and he adopted Colby as well. So anyway, we've got uh, then on the right hand side, we've got Charles Vallow, husband number four. He was shot twice in the chest by Alex Cox. You can see below Laurie, Alex Cox is Laurie's brother. And we've also got JJ Vallow. <laughs> Are we following? I hope you watched yesterday's episode. Otherwise, you're going to be like, wait, what? Okay. So, and then Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy Daybell. She died on October 19th, 2019. So I'm just going to keep this here for a bit while I start reading you these notes, okay? Wish me luck for my voice. So two days before Thanksgiving in 2019, everyone was wondering, uh, where was her son? Where was Lori's son? Lori said Tylee was in college now and JJ was in Arizona with their friend Melanie. And we're going to look at that as well after this, okay? I've got a whole thing prepared for you here, so just hang in there. JJ's grandparents, Kay and Larry, called the police. People tended to buy whatever story Lori was selling. Okay, so the cops went there, asked Lori, where are the kids? She said, oh my word, I cannot believe that Charles Vallow, who was already deceased then, that his sister and JJ's grandparents are calling the cops on me? Like, why is that? And they said, oh, my word, she was so convincing. They literally said, I'm really sorry for the visit. The police then called Melanie, the friend. Okay. Maybe I should just quickly, so that you can just see this. I just want to show you, just so that you have a visual. Okay, you need a visual to see, and we'll go back to this part here. 
So look at the family tree I prepared for you. So on the right-hand side is Kay and Larry Woodcock. So just have a look at this while I'm reading, <laughs> and I hope it'll make a lot of sense. So we've got on the left-hand side, Barry and Janice Cox, Lori's parents. She's got uh, four siblings, Adam Cox, Summer Shiftlet. Well, she has one of four. Adam Cox, Summer Shiftlet, and Stacy Lynn Cox Cope. All right? Stacy Lynn Cox Cope died mysteriously as well at the age of 31 from natural causes, diabetic shock, and Alex was the only... Oh, no, she got four siblings. Alex was the only one in the house at the time and used her credit cards on that day, so that's why it's quite a red flag. But anyway, we've got Adam, we've got Summer, we got Stacy, we've got Alex Cox. Those are her siblings. <laughs> are you following? Okay, great. So then you can just look at this. I'm going to run through it quickly now. And as I am reading through my notes, you, you can have a good visual of who's who in this zoo, okay? Now, Stacy had a daughter, Melanie. Melanie is Laurie's niece. Remember these names because it's important. Melanie was married to Brandon Boudreaux, someone that Alex, allegedly Alex or someone... It's, it's pretty much Alex, but okay, allegedly Alex tried to actually kill with a hit by shooting him through his car window, but the bullet missed him. Then Melanie got divorced from Brandon, and then she got remarried to um, Ian Palowski. Then we've got, <laughs> in gray, Nelson Yanes was Laurie's first husband. William Lagoya, Laurie's second husband, she had Colby with him. Third husband, Joe Ryan, everyone in black and white deceased. Joe Ryan, except Barry Cox. That's the only photo of him I could find. No one knows where he is, if he's alive or not, what they don't talk about him. Okay. They say his name is not even known, but I found his name, Barry. <laughs> We've got Joe Ryan, husband number three. He had the daughter, Tylee Ryan, with Lori. Then husband number four, Charles Vello. He took in Tylee Ryan, then he adopted JJ Vello as well. Now JJ's parents, <laughs> are you following? Are Kay and Larry, Kay Kay's son had JJ Vello, but Kay's son and his wife were not able to look after JJ. So for a time, Kay and Larry took JJ in and then they allowed Laurie and Charles to adopt him because they knew that JJ was on the autism spectrum and needed a lot of stimulation, a lot of care. So they asked if they would and they said, of course. I mean, wow. And then to think that Laurie is being charged with first-degree murder for him, for Tylee. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Tammy Daybell. Okay. Have you heard the call from Alex's first wife to the cops? Yes, I have. I've literally, I'm literally, I've deep-dived this case so much, but what I'm trying to do is because I do understand the feeling of overwhelm when looking at this case. So I'm just breaking it down for you guys, the Grizzlies, piece by piece chunk by chunk. If you're brand new here, you don't know what a grizzly is, just subscribe, hit the bell. You're a grizzly. <laughs> um, you're part of this community. That's what a grizzly is. Okay. So this is this slide. And I will go back to this as I read through my notes so that you can properly look at who we're dealing with. I'm just showing you everyone in the picture. We've got Joe Ryan, husband number three, and Tylee Ryan, which was his daughter, both deceased. Um, and then we've got Joe Ryan's sister. Her name is Annie Cushing. Now, she's very suspicious of how he died in 2018, based on now everything that Laurie and Chad Daybell have been exposed to have allegedly done until, of course, they go to trial. Annie Cushing, Joe's sister, Tylee's aunt. She's got a YouTube channel called Annie Lytics. So if you want to check that out, I would highly recommend it. She obviously used to just mostly talk about data. She calls making data sexy. That's part of her career. But she does also cover this case, and she's got some interesting information, of course, because she's part of the family. Then on the right-hand side of the line, we've got Larry and Kay Woodcock. Kay is Charles Vallow, husband number four's sister. Okay. And then we've got at the bottom here, Kresha K. Easton is Kay Woodcock's daughter, which means Charles Vallow's niece, JJ Vallow's aunt, and she's got a YouTube channel called Difficult Research. Difficult Research. And she's selling like little armbands, Justice for JJ and Tylee. Um, she covers the case quite a bit as well. So, yes, this is pretty much that. Love Annie. Yes, she's great. Annie Cushing's new channel is A Murderous Heart. Okay, thank you. I'll check that out as well, and I'll add it to my slide for another time. Yeah, this case is too much to take in. I know it's, it's, a, it's actually a very overwhelming case. 
and I don't know, I'm pretty good at chunking things down, you know, to make others more comfortable. I understand overwhelm and I'm like, it's okay. We're going to break this down. You're going to be experts in this after this. You're going to understand who's who, what's going on. It's going to be okay. <laughs> okay, so if we just quickly continue this and then I'll read my notes. These, this is Chad Daybell on the right hand side and Tammy Daybell. Tammy Daybell deceased, Chad being charged with first degree murder, Chad and Lori. Now, on the left hand side, we have their children Garth Daybell, Emma Murray, Seth Daybell, Lee Murphy, and Mark Daybell. Those are their children. They had five children together. They were married for 23 years. They've done some interviews, as you can see here, and they were the ones that said that their mother was actually asphyxiated. But we haven't seen the full autopsy yet. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. Okay, and then we've got Lori Vallow's friends. We've got Bernadette Flores Lopez. She was in school with her. She said that Lori was hilarious. She was dedicated to cheerleading, that Lori didn't start dating till senior year, and that she was kind of like a girl's girl. She just hung out with the girls. You know, so it's kind of weird for her to see that Lori was like marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage type of thing, you know? Then we've got April Raymond. She was a friend in Hawaii. She said Lori's 58-day visit uh, to her when she said she was leaving Charles Vallow was the most chaotic and manic that she'd ever seen her and said Lori was like a different woman entirely. If you don't know what we're talking about there, I'll recap uh, when I read these things to you, uh, all my notes. But we did cover it yesterday a bit. Um, so if you remember the name April and everything, you'll understand what I'm saying there. But don't worry, we're going to cover it. And then we've got Melanie Gibb. She lives in Arizona. She introduced Lori to Chad Daybell. She knew about their plans and also believed in zombies. Now, that's a red flag that she knew about their plans. And that's why on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on Melanie. Because I believe at some point yesterday, I said she was a nice lady. But I haven't deep dived up to yesterday. I have now looked at a whole bunch more on her specifically. I was just like, oh, she actually kind of turned on them, spoke to the police. However, oh, I understand. I got a lot of comments. I'm like, no, she's not a nice lady. Like, what are you saying? I'm like, okay, my bad. So we're going to deep dive all the things she said on Wednesday. I'm going to break that down for you. Exactly. Melanie Gibb is not innocent at all. She knew their plans. Obviously, she knew their premeditated plans because she believed in the zombie thing too, right? And uh, knew how the system was in rating people dark and light. She's done quite a bunch of interviews, so we can look at a breakdown of that. And yes, it's actually quite scary to think that children can be labeled as zombies and then murdered. It's ridiculous. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> And then let's just see what else we've got here quickly. And then we've got the red flag gang. <laughs> These are the careers that they've had. Alex Cox. You saw a little snippet of him in my trailer and in my intro today. Yes, he was a stand-up comedian. He'd been in jail for assaulting Joe Ryan, husband number three of Lori. He was a radio DJ, a stand-up comedian, a truck driver, and a masseur, apparently. <laughs> And then we've got Lori Vallow Daybell, hairstylist, yoga instructor. Lori and Charles Vallow ran a juice bar in Hawaii. I'm getting uh, laundry vibes there. And then we've got Chad Daybell, copy editor, Cemetery Sexton. So he was professional grave digger, sales manager, managing editor, sales executive, and a self published author. Okay. So we've got all of that. Hello to David. Mr. Robinson is in the house. So nice to see you. Hello. I hope that you're doing well. We're all sending you so much love, all the Grizzlies. Um, it's great to have you here. <laughs> I've been talking to Mr. David Robinson about this case today. I'm just like, and then <laughs> let me give you the breakdown. It's just, wow. Melanie gave, gave me that. Mm -hmm. The heebie-jeebies. Yeah, Melanie and Zulima. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zulima's one. Ooh, that is those interviews and things. Hello, it's so nice to have you here. Okay, so I'm guessing you guys have got a good overview now of who is who in the zoo, right? So can I can I read my notes to you? We carry on. So people tended to buy whatever story Laurie was selling. The cops then apologized for the visit. They called Melanie, the friend who we just saw. And she said, no, JJ wasn't with her. She hadn't seen him in three months, actually. Detectives also found that Tylee was not enrolled in BYU. 
The next day, police went back to Laurie's house with a search warrant, but Laurie was gone because that's what happened. When the police arrived on Laurie's door, the next day she was gone. House cleaned out, gone, moving to the next place. She moved a lot, okay? And then so uh, the FBI investigation began. Now, JJ was seven years old and Tylee was 17. Well, she was just about to turn 17. And they disappeared in September 2019 for anyone just rolling in now. In 2004, Lori entered a beauty pageant, Mrs. Texas, and said life was busy and she was a ticking time bomb, which you guys saw. I hope you saw my trailer. Um, in her second marriage, she had her son, Colby. Um, he says his mom treated him like a boyfriend. So you know how the brother and Lori, Alex and Lori have a very, in a, they had a very inappropriate relationship where they'd like simulate sex acts and I don't know, it just sounded really freaking bizarre. And he's like, it's normal. Well, Colby, her son from the second marriage said that uh, his mom treated him like a boyfriend. He says they moved so much that to him moving was normal and he felt like they were always on the run. The third husband, Joe Ryan. Colby describes him as explosive and violent. He said that he committed essay on the kids or on Colby, on himself, and he said maybe Tylee too. Yes. Do you guys want to see the Texas pageant clip now? Let me know. Say yes if you want to see it right now. All right. So I made a note of here of like, literally this was me, um, like, wait a minute. So let's look at all these husbands and let's look at who died. And then I'm like, oh, seven people. So seven people connected to Lori died. Here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six on the screen. But then also her sister from 1998, I believe it was, right? That ended up being a little bit mysterious. Okay, you say yes. So let's go quickly over who died. Lori's sister in 1998. Then uh, Joe Ryan, hubby number three in 2018 from an apparent heart attack, but she collected money after that. Then Charles Vello, shot by her brother. Then Tylee and JJ, murdered and buried in the backyard of her soon-to-be husband. How scary is that? And then Chad Daybell's wife, Tammy, who he was married to for 23 years and had five children with. And then Alex Cox, her brother. One day after they exhumed Tammy Daybell's body, then her brother drops dead. It's unbelievable. You cannot make this up. Okay. So next we will look at some more of my notes. But let's look at this that you said yes to. Let's look at um, Lori Ryan. She is in this. There's a few things that I put together here, which is her at the pageant. It's her Wheel of Fortune uh debut i don't know and then i think i put some of what's his name alex cox's clip at the end too so let's see this in 2004 lori was recruited to do the pageant contestant number four lori ryan lori does not lack for confidence she was bold enough to get up on stage at a texas beauty pageant She's Mrs. Hayes County. Her husband's name is Joseph. They've been married for three and a half years, and they have two children. It was about presenting yourself well. This is her mom. Having talent. And she worked really hard to get in perfect shape. I don't know really what prompted her to want to do the pageant, other than it gave her kind of an outlet. And she thought that might help her marriage at the time. Lori does have stage presence. She's very poised. She did everything beautifully. Wheel of Fortune, everyone. 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat Sajak and Vanna White. Here they come. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Hello there. How are you doing, Lori? Uh, Lori Ryan you? from Austin, Texas. A right. hairstylist in Austin, hey? That's right, the best. How's, how's the hair in Austin? It's good. Good. Austin's well, a happening place. Probably thanks to you. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much. Talk about your family a little bit. <laughs> I have a wonderful husband, Joseph, at home, who is watching our two beautiful children, Colby, who's seven, and Tylee, who is one. Yeah, what do you guys like to do for fun? Uh, we like to play all kinds of sports on our three acres. Okay. Interesting that she's describing such a dream life, but yet there she was talking in you know, hindsight, that she really wanted to kill this guy. <laughs> she wanted to murder him, remember, according to scripture? But yeah, she's like, a beautiful life with my husband, two beautiful children, like, oh, my word. Sounds like you have a nice life there. We do. Congratulations. Thank nice you. to have you with us. 
There you go. N. There is no N. I'm sorry to report, Laura. Three R. Uh, no, no R no. either. Loretta? So, uh, who's going to start here? How about you, Lori? Woo! Watch it. Everybody watch their own arrow there. 500. N. It's my motto in life. There's one N, yes. All right. Well, the turn's gone. The cash will stay. Maybe we'll get back to you. Floretta, your turn. Oh, yeah. Sorry, the best body language in the work. Uh, Lori? 600. S. There are two S's, yeah. S. And 900. C. Three C's. Good for you. You have almost $4,000 for it. I'd like to buy a vowel. Mm -hmm. An I. There are some I's, three of them. <laughs> 800. C. There are two of those. Three hundred. N. Yeah, three N. Let the narcissism wow. begin. Another vowel. Sure. An A. There are five A's, boy. Right? Yeah. All right, we need a letter. Uh, there are two P's. You want to risk it? You can. There's either bankrupt or that $10,000 Kenneth Cole gift certificate. You be risking $6,000. I have to. Now I'm here. You have to? I had no money anyway. Well, okay, yeah. then lift the darn thing up. Oh, my goodness. What is going on? What do we have? Oh, my God. <laughs> the Wheel of Narcissus. <laughs> Oh man, that is funny. Uh, Melinda, you're asking, yes, I have watched that. Uh, I've watched it. I watched a lot. I've watched a lot on this case. I'm just presenting it to you guys little by little. Okay. Well, a lot by a lot, layer by layer. Peel the onion. Let's keep going. G. 800. G. Yes, there are two G's. <laughs> I want to go. Okay. Gopher, Doc, Isaac, and Captain Steubing. Yeah! Thank you! You're welcome. Thank you for letting me do that. Oh, it's a free country. Wow. Of course, uh, those are all uh, correspondents on 60 Minutes 2. You got $7,500, and you got this gift certificate. I wasn't trying to talk you out of it. I just thought that that was a lot to risk for. But what do I know? Uh, the important thing is she has $17,500 just by not listening to me. What were you thinking? You're an expert. Yeah, yeah. What do I know? She has Learning even Believe there. it or not, we'll be back. What a comeback. Right there. <laughs> Oh, Closed captioning sponsored by... Lori? N. One N. Yeah, Emma. He seems uncomfortable with her. Loretta? No T. Lori? R. Two R's. Wow. $18,000. On the map. Loretta? Lori? D. One D. She was money hungry from day one. Loretta? Luis, a letter. I. Two eyes. No this, money for vowels, but maybe they'll do it for you. Republic of Ireland. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Lori. How you doing? I'm good. You should be. I know you're ready to take that one away. Uh, wait and see. <laughs> Luis, don't get it. But he did. Uh, good. And uh, we're happy for you. You did very well despite my advice. $17,500. Thanks, Laura, very much. Ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. All right. Oh, we'll take a break, and then uh, Luis and I are going to uh, go out and maybe we'll have a beer or something. Oh, well, uh, we'll go to the book. She's like, woo! Okay, and now, everyone. 
Let me actually remove this for a second and continue with my notes just a little bit, okay? And then we'll look at Alex's little comedy skit, okay? <laughs> you guys are all puking all over the place. I told you, this content is very disturbing. Okay, so we continue on. Let's go back to this. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did very well to spite my advice. Oh, boy. So we've got husband number four, Charles Vello, right? K is Charles's sister and JJ's grandmother. So mutual friends introduced her. That would be Melanie, allegedly. Uh, introduced Laurie to Charles. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. Melanie introduced Laurie to Chad Daybell. Moving along. Mutual friends introduced Charles Vello, husband number four, to Laurie. Colby says Charles was really nice to all of the kids. He had children of his own from a previous marriage. He was Catholic, but he joined the LDS church for Laurie. He did a lot for Laurie. And you know what he got? Shot twice in the chest by her brother. Horrible, because she wanted the life insurance. And actually, he'd switched the life insurance to his sister's name. She never got the life insurance. That must have made her really angry, huh? Horrible. Um, Charles worked, and Laurie was a stay-at-home mom. And they moved to Phoenix from Texas. Now, on February 14, 2013, they took possession of JJ from Kay and Larry Woodcock. They wanted their own child together because, of course, uh, Lori had Colby from marriage number two, and she had Tylee from marriage number three, and then he had children of his own from a previous marriage, but they wanted their own child together, so they decided to adopt someone else's child, which makes no sense, right? <laughs> but yes. Okay. So JJ was actually born 10 weeks prematurely. He was on the autism spectrum. He survived a lot. And that reminds me of the Gannon Stauch case that we've looked at deeply too. If you haven't seen my coverage on that, check that out. But, you know, he was also born prematurely and fought for his life and really was full of life. Everyone loved him, became something, you know, at such a young age. Like he was doing well at school. And then a monster decided he couldn't have life anymore. So that happened to Gannon Stauff by his stepmother. And this happened to J.J. Vallow. At the age of seven, J.J. was murdered by what seems to be a combination of, allegedly, I still have to say allegedly at this point, Chad Daybell, Laurie Vallow Daybell, and Alex Cox. Okay, so initially um, J.J. became a ward of the state and then Kay and Larry took J.J. in. And then they um, let Laurie and Charles adopt him. JJ changed for the better because of all the attention he was receiving. Laurie was a really great mom, according to Larry um, and Kay. They actually said, yeah, she was an unbelievable mom. I was like, whoa, like, it's quite hectic, right? Colby's happily married with children and just published a book. Yes, he is. Um, we're going to look at everything, guys. Don't you think I missed a beat? Colby's got a really cool Instagram as well that we can see everything. We'll go through that. Not today, though. Today is layer number two. There's probably going to be <laughs> quite a lot of layers to this case. We're slowly but surely getting to the bottom of it. So Lori and Charles actually moved to Hawaii. Uh, they'd always wanted to live there. It was a joint dream. And that's where Lori made her friend that I showed you earlier in the slide, April. Lori was a hairstylist, and then when they went to Hawaii, then Charles and Lori opened a juice bar. Okay. So eventually, so it was Charles, Lori, Colby, Tylee, and JJ. Happy little family moving to Hawaii. Colby was older and decided, you know what, he's going to leave Hawaii, go off to college. Um, and so he did that. And thankfully, I think. Huh? Thankfully, I think, because he survived a lot. He wasn't in the midst of Laurie. And when he moved out and went to college, wait, did I say, I don't want to skip what I said, but when he moved out and went to college, uh, he met a woman called Kelsey, who is now married to and has two kids with. They fell in love, they got married, and of course, Laurie didn't like it. Uh, Kelsey was like, why is your mom so friggin' defiant? Why is she always trying to one-up me? Why is she like this? And Colby was like, I don't understand. Like, I don't know what's going on. But she was like a friggin' monster-in-law, you know? Horrible. Now, in the spring of 2018, 
Joe Ryan, husband number three, died of a heart attack. But Lori was the beneficiary of the policy that was there for Tylee, I believe. $75,000 is what she got. And she um, got Tylee's social security. Lori said that Joe was so evil that he was taken by God, that he was so evil that he just needed to die. So even though we heard later that she's like, I just wanted to murder him. Well, she said also that, yeah, he was just taken by God because he was so evil he needed to die. Ridiculous, right? Yes, that's what I just said, right? Lori was jealous of Colby's wife. That's ridiculous. And that's where Colby said in the Dateline interview that uh, his mom kind of treated him like a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lori isn't going to work. Yeah, this might be exactly. This might be the craziest plot of all murder cases. I think so. I really think so. I think this is the craziest one. Okay. So then. So then. After husband number four is shot by her brother. Lori decides that's it. She's packing up. She's taking JJ entirely and moving. Wait, I'm skipping a little. Wait, we were in Hawaii. Colby left, got married, all that. Then after being in Hawaii for a while, they returned. Uh, back to Arizona, I believe. And then, I mean, there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot in between. I hope I've written this all down chronologically. I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> My mind is like, wait, what? She believes she was a real goddess reincarnated. I know, right? Okay. Okay, so here we go. After four years, Lori and Charles eventually left away. There we go. With JJ and Tylee and moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Her friend, April, was kind of sad. You know, she's like, oh, well, maybe island life wasn't for them. So I don't know what exactly made their move. I'm thinking it's probably money, right? To Maybe they weren't making what they wanted to from their juice bar. In February 2019, <laughs> February 2019, right after Charles Vello filed for divorce, Lori got on a plane with Tylee, went back to Hawaii for 58 days and just landed there and phoned her friend April and said, hey, I'm here. I'm leaving Charles. Can I stay with you? April said, of course. But she said she noticed that Lori had a bag filled with papers and a bunch of burner phones. Burner phones is quite the pattern in this case, too, as you saw. Lori had burner phones. Alex had burner phones. Chad Dable had burner phones. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the juice biz didn't pan out. Okay. So we continue. Lori said that Charles had an affair. But April said she was listening to the story, you know, just like, okay, and then what? And she realized Lori's kind of losing her mind at this point because, like, the stories didn't add up. All these phones in the bag buzzing all the time, all these burner phones, multiple, several burner phones buzzing around in the bag, all the paperwork. And then she was also trying to recruit April for this 144,000 cult in Rexburg, Idaho, which means she was, of course, already in contact with Chad Debo. The obsession had already begun while she was still with Charles Vello. She was already dancing around for two to three hours in her dancing room that Charles Vello had given her and sending these videos off to Chad Debo. She was already recruiting. They were already fantasizing about being king and queen of this freaking cult and then they're going to live in a castle and everyone else is going to live in tents. But there was no space. There was no just no consideration for either of their spouses, not for Tammy Daybell, Chad's wife, or for Charles Bello. All right, so, so, <laughs> Lori then went after 58 days back to Arizona. Uh, she made a friend in Arizona, Melanie Gibb, who I showed you earlier. They were both interested in end times prophecy. Now, there was, uh, the group held a conference in Utah, and this is where Lori met Chad Daybell. So Chad was a Mormon missionary. Wow. And he was married to his college sweetheart, Tammy Daybell. Chad kind of quickly said that him and Lori had been married to each other seven times in previous lives. So once is not good enough. No, seven times. Lori was very spiritually attracted to Chad. Because when asked, when they asked her friends, do you think there was like chemistry? Like what was going on there? She said, no. Oh, well, Melanie, really. And other interviews that I've seen said, well, she was spiritually attracted uh, to Chad Daybell. She was very intrigued by everything he was saying. Most women would probably run for the heels with everything he was saying, but not Lori. 
she liked it. She was like, oh, yes, this this is awesome. I'm freaking loving it. So let me just quickly play you this um, important clip where Charles Vallow says that Lori Vallow Dable has lost her marbles, okay? Before he was murdered. And by the way, I found out that the autopsy on Charles Vallow showed that he wasn't like standing up and, you know, there was this whole story that Alex said he hit him with a bat and then he was in self-defense shooting Charles Vallow. Apparently, the autopsy showed that Charles Vallow's second shot was when he was already on the ground. That's when the person shot him from above. That's scary. Okay, so hold on. Let me just get this ready for you. Okay. So he was phoning the police several times. He was the one that asked for the psych evaluation that Lori actually passed. He was very worried about his safety and the children's safety because he said Lori's lost her mind. She is saying that I my body has been inhabited by a new spirit and that I need to die and my stuff needs to go. And he was worried about the safety of the kids and all of this kind of stuff. Sorry if I'm missing any of your stuff. When she married to Charles, when was Lori sent? Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. So listen to this. Gilbert Police Department, this is Dee. Dee, my name is Charles Vallow. I've got an order to hold my wife. You can look it up, Lori Vallow. Uh-huh. And go ahead. Yep. You. Um, we spoke to you earlier about her. Right. She is at the Gilbert PD saying I stole her purse. I'm going to go over there, and the officer said he won't hold her because he doesn't have an active order. Can you get that to him, like, immediately? I'm going there right now. Okay, just one moment, sir. Thank you. Is she is she in the lobby right now? That's correct. Blonde hair. Okay. And how far away are you? I'm about ten minutes away. About Do you want minutes. officers Where, with you her? Get your civic center drive. Your civic center drive. Yes. East seventy-five East yeah. Civic Center Drive. And do you want officers to go down there with her? She's supposed to be retained for bridges. I got an order last night. She's lost her marble. Okay, we'll get in front. We'll get in contact with our front office or our lobby. Okay, but I don't want to go there if she's going to um, not be. Yeah, I, I'm going to call them right now. Can you call me back and let me know? I can have an officer contact you. What's your number? Thanks. They just blank out the phone number, of course. Okay, thank you. Thank you. January 31st, 2019. 13 hours, 14 minutes, 40 seconds. January 31st, 2019. 13 hours, 20 minutes, 53 seconds. Gilbert Police, this is Mandy. Can I help you? Yeah, this is Charles Vallow. I just called a moment ago. My wife said to give her police department saying I stole her purse. But she's in, uh, been called for oh, being held at Bridges. She's supposed to when they can find her. And she is there. Said somebody would call me back in a minute. And uh, I just want to make sure that's going to happen. I just, I've been trying to find her all day. She needs serious help. What's your name? My name is Charles Vallow. And your wife's name? Lori Vallow. She's okay. the one making the complaint against me at the police department right there. You're on okay. Civic Center Drive, right? Yep. That's between, I'm going to come up to Lindsay and where to? Lindsay, and, uh, you're on Lindsay now, you said? Yeah. Lindsay and what? Lindsay and uh, Riggs. Lindsay and Riggs, you're going to go way north to Lindsay and Warner? Okay, gotcha. Okay. And then Warner, you're going to hang a left, go up to... Um, Easiest way is to go up to Gilbert and then go back down south to Civic Center. We're just south of um, Gilbert and Civic Center, or Gilbert and Warner. Okay. Uh, did you know if they were going to give her, do the hold, the, the hold on her for Bridges? Did you just call in, Charles? I did, yeah. Okay. So it looks like we have all the notes in here. Yeah, they, well, yeah, they haven't called you. It's only been a couple of minutes, it's been less than 10 minutes. Must say that they will call me back. Yes, they will be calling you back. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. And is your wife, Lori, is she still here that you know of? 
Yes, she said she's waiting for you to bring a person. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, yep, they're get an officer assigned here just as soon as they can. An officer will be contacting you. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Shame. He just sounds so. I don't know. He's like bye bye. It's horrible because we're gonna get more into what Lori did there. So just let's put this one on again. Okay. Are you guys still doing okay? <laughs> I hope so. All right. Yes, everyone, remember that Nightbot is not a real person, but we appreciate Nightbot nevertheless. So now, while Charles was at work, Lori had an event, okay, at the house, a sleepover in which she freaking invited Chad Daybell, the nerve. Okay, Chad tended to manipulate individuals. He was very influential on one-on-one. -on -one. He didn't talk much about his beliefs and how deep this really went to a group. He kind of spoke to everyone one-on-one, -on -one, you know? like the coward he is, <clears throat> get the snark on. Chad said that he'd lived 31 multiple lives already, that he was just about, what do they call it? Like, he was exalted. He was just like above all, 31 levels, basically. I mean, is he mixing in Freemasonry now? What's going on here? <laughs> this guy, he's just like cherry picking what he wants to believe, right? He had labeled people as light or dark. Light people loved Jesus Christ. Dark people were more following Satan. But that was just the initial stages of his cult-like thinking. Of course, it got much, much worse. Now, he said that Lori was an eternal being sent from heaven who had 21 multiple lives. I mean, just about everyone else was a newbie. Okay? That's how he labeled them. Um, <laughs> he said him and Lori had lived five lives each on this planet and the rest... They'd been married seven times, remember, were on other planets. So Lori, he thought, yeah, it's pretty cool. You've got you've you've lived 21 lives. I've lived 31 though, and everyone else is a freaking newbie, maybe two or three. There's narcissism right there. Right? Narcissism, delusions of grandeur, exactly. Just like, wow. The highest level of friggin' delusions. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Nightbot, yeah, Nightbot is not a real person. But Nightbot is listening to the case. Every detail, anyway. And Nightbot analyzes who my top chatter is, huh? Larray, I want to say, it's you. It's you. You're apparently my top chatter, according to Nightbot. So, well done. Nightbot favors you. <laughs> he, he likes you a lot. <laughs> okay, so, continuing on. Whew. I mean, I'm just like reading this and I'm like, what, what, what? Like 21 multiple lives for Lori, 31 for him. Okay, they would lived five lives on this planet and then they'd been married seven times before. Chad praised Lori's spiritual gifts versus her physical beauty and that really got her going. She liked that because maybe she was used to being objectified and she thought, you know what? This man sees I'm so much more. I'm pure narcissism, just like him. Okay, no, <laughs> but probably. It's just like horrible. Anyway. Moving on, uh, Chad said that their relationship was written in scripture. It was actually foretold. I mean, I'd like to see that scripture. Where does it say Chad and friggin' Laurie and zombies? Hmm? What? Yeah, Chad had to have more lives than Laurie. Yeah, Chad's favorite pickup line was, we were married in a different life. I can only imagine. <laughs> You're like, that's funny. I have my notes in my notebook. Yes. <laughs> And she needed men to worship her. Exactly. It's more like a worship me vibe than just like you're hot. She liked that whole like, yes, you're going to worship me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes, Chad said that their relationship was written to scripture. It was foretold. Chad and Lori believed that the 144,000 special ones of which they were in charge of. I would love to put all these cult leaders together in a room and be like, now what? You know what I mean? Anyway, they believed they were the leaders of recruiting 144,000 disciples and they would settle all of them in Rexburg, Idaho, where the population was 29,000. Oh man, it feels like where I live now, right? Little village is just like, imagine if I'm like, oh yes, okay, so wait, I did look up how many. I think here where I live is like maybe, it's between 30 and 40,000, I can't remember, but imagine if I'm like, all right, so in this little village of mine, the, the 144,000 will be settling here in the Netherlands, like Right. Chad lived close by with his wife, Tammy, and their children because she, Lori, moved to Rexburg, Idaho after Charles Bellow was shot. Right? And, of course, as I said, Chad and Lori said they'd live in a castle. Everyone else would just be intense. <laughs> these two, these two are horrendous. Now, when 
actually, everyone felt a shift already. The danger of this obsession that Laurie had with Chad and Chad with Laurie when Laurie was still married to Charles Fellow because Charles Fellow's mother, Tilly, actually died and Laurie just decided, eh, no, she's not going to attend that funeral. That's not for her. It's just like, no, you can go on your own. So Charles Fellow had to go and mourn his mother's death on his own. No wife next to him because she was so busy dancing around in the room for uh, Chad Daybell and planning her friggin' the recruitment of 144,000 disciples. Wow. Okay, so Charles kept trying to make Laurie happy, and uh, in every house, as I said, he ensured that she had a dancing room. Laurie danced two to three hours a night, filmed herself, and emailed the videos to Chad Daybell. I mean, did she have Dropbox, or what is she, what is she doing? Those are big, big files. I would know. I'm a YouTuber. These video files are huge. <laughs> Mr. Robinson and I know because we're always sending these, uh, like the drone footage and the search, you know, for Daniel Robinson, all the footage that goes with it. It's huge. We need Dropbox or OneDrive or something. How was she sending this to friggin' oh, Chad Daybell? Look at me dancing around in spirit. Like, okay. And what were you wearing? Then Lori disappeared for those 58 days that I talked about earlier. She went to stay with her friend April in Kauai. And she was there to on a mission, remember? She was there to gather April for the 144,000. I will show you April again so that you can see. There you go. That's where she went, to stay with April for 58 days. Laurie told her friend April that the darkest spirit on the planet was actually Oprah Winfrey. She was talking so freaking lunatic crazy. April was like, eh, that face April's making this. She was like that by how she described it. I'm just like, okay then. Where's the Lori that I once knew? The island girl. Like, yay, bikini, swimming, paddle boarding. Where's that friend? Juice bar? And she's like, no, we must be recruiting for this and this. She was like on a mission, completely brainwashed already by Chad Deva. And I would put it that way because people had asked, who do you think was leading who? And there's a few friends that said it was as if Chad was like the puppet master and Laurie was really the puppet. She was completely brainwashed by him. Wow. Okay. So April turned her friend down politely, just like, no, thank you. Thanks for the invitation, but I'm going to stay here. <laughs> so Laurie then left abruptly and returned home. Charles actually cried when she returned home because for 58 days, he didn't know where she was. She was practically a missing person. I don't think he reported her missing at that point, not from what I know. But um, he was just like, where did she go? He was like phoning around and she took Tylee with, remember? Yes, I think she did have Dropbox. She probably did, yeah. <laughs> Erin, she had an OnlyFans account and needed a dancing room. Well, unfortunately for her, it didn't exist yet. I noticed she didn't make an attempt on Oprah. <laughs> yeah, she didn't. She was like, Oprah, <gasps> the darkest spirit. Okay. Now, July 11th, July 11th, 2019, Alex Cox, Laurie's brother, shot Charles Vallow in self-defense. We watched that little video in part one. Do you remember the body cam footage? He called 911 and he was totally calm. Remember that? Alex pretended to do CPR on him. As we heard, it sounded like him jumping around on a bed or something. Horrible. Now, Laurie and Tylee and JJ had actually been there that same day and they left to take JJ to school so Lori in a premeditated way I'm just going to say it like that sent the kids outside they heard the two shots they were like what in the heck Lori got in the car said we gotta go took JJ and Tylee to Burger King for breakfast then took JJ to school and came back with Tylee so that's the body cam footage that we've looked at a bit where Tylee's actually blanked out because of course she was a minor Oh, it's just horrendous. So I'm just going to go back to this slide here so that you can see more of what's going on. Yeah, fortunately, well, Robert, that's the thing. Fortunately, her dancing now will be behind bars. She's literally still dancing for hours behind bars to her sad health, <laughs> as we said yesterday. No music. All right. Um, so here's the thing. Alex says that Charles hit him on the back of the head with... Uh, with a bat, a baseball bat. But uh, Alex conveniently had a 44, I believe he said 45 caliber handgun with him. He said he always had the gun with him. 
Right. But he also said he went to the bedroom to fetch it. So it makes no sense timeline wise to be like, ah, he's coming at me with a bat. He hit me on the head. I'm going to run to my bedroom real quick. Like, why do you have a bedroom at Lori's house at this point? She'd only been living there for three weeks or so. Finally, like she kind of accepted the relationship was over, but she wanted revenge. You see? So she thought, okay, he's divorcing me. Is that so? I'm just going to make sure that he get shot by my brother. And then I'm going to claim the life insurance, not realizing, oh, damn, he put the life insurance in his sister's name. Why? Because he was worried about Lori's mental health all along. Yes. Okay, so Alex had this gun. Charles was uh, six foot two and 220 pounds. So he was also a former semi-professional baseball player, I believe. So if he really wanted to take a swing at Alex with a bat, he would have done some significant damage and not that pathetic little cut that he kept dabbing with the tissue. So I don't know how he got that injury, but I'm pretty sure it would be like, I don't know, he'd bang his own head against the wall or ask Glory to scratch him. Or I don't know what the heck. We just don't know what they're thinking here. The room where Charles was found had just about no furniture in it. And even though it was her new little house, you know, because she moved around a lot with the kids, they also felt like always on the run. Um, and they were just about to move again. They thought that was her dancing room there too. She made one for herself. She said she was present when it all happened and then left prior to the police getting there. <laughs> wow. Now, Charles, of course, as I just said, had that $1 million life insurance, but he had switched it to his sister and Laurie didn't know. And we heard that call yesterday that she made two life insurance. Do you remember? I hope so. If you need me to play it again, let me know. Lori did not cry or have any emotional reaction to Charles's death. In fact, she threw a big old pool party that afternoon at the house, at her house, a pool party. Yes. Um, okay. Now, at that point, uh, people described Tylee as idolizing her mother. And it seemed like after this, no longer that was no longer the case which is probably why Lori labeled her a zombie and essentially why Lori and chad daybell and her brother alex cox all allegedly thought this was this was time for her to go from this planet which is just horrendous because she was a 16 year old girl so detectives actually drove Lori and the kids home in a van uh, they describe it as bizarre because they were happy-go-lucky you know especially Lori. she wasn't upset at all she was smiling like that was hectic Okay. Self-defense. Yeah. And they didn't, um, no one got charged with it. Hmm? Okay. One person said play it again. Um, so yeah, you no longer fit my narrative. <laughs> Let me know if you guys need that. Otherwise just watch it from part one. Um, anyway, so there were no charges for self-defense, which is hectic to think about, that they got away with it. Charles told his sister Kay and other family members that if something happened to him, it would be Alex and Lori. Hmm? Alex and Lori. Six months before Charles was killed in January 2019, the couple had had another dispute. So listen to this. Charles said that this is six months before he was shot, okay? Charles said his wife had strange religious beliefs, that his body had been overtaken by an evil spirit named Nick Schneider. I mean, she made up names for these spirits. I mean, of course, Tammy Darebell was overtaken with Viola. And wow, uh, apparently, according to Laurie and Chad Darebell, uh, Charles Vallow, his body was overtaken by a spirit named Nick Schneider. She said because Charles was no longer in his body, <laughs> she was going to get rid of his stuff. He was on a bit. Now, listen to this. Okay. This is how crazy this woman can get. He was on a business trip in Texas and on his return. Okay. When he came back home, he found out that his ticket had been canceled. He got to the airport. She'd canceled his ticket because at this point she was like really believing. Oh my word. Well, according to what we know that she was believing. He's been overtaken by this evil spirit. I must intervene with everything he does. So on his return home, he gets to the airport in Texas. He realizes, what? Like, my ticket's been canceled? Okay, so he gets another one. Had to buy a new ticket right there and then. When he lands back home, his truck was no longer at the airport. 
And he found out that Lori had also taken out $35,000 out of his business account. So she canceled his flight. She took his truck from the airport. So now again, we're getting Letitia Stout vibes. And she took $35,000 out of his business account. He filed a petition to get Lori mentally evaluated. Police went to the house to get in because uh, Lori, you know, Lori had taken the, the, the truck and the house keys. And when they entered the house, it was empty and Lori and the kids were gone. The next day, Lori went to the police station. She seemed normal, rational. Lori said she spent the night in a hotel to stay away from Charles when he returned home because, you know, she was so scared of him because he's just so abusive. Wow. So there was a psych evaluation audit with CBI, Community Bridges, um, an institution, right? So she had to do it because her husband had ordered this. It was like a, what do you call it? Like an involuntary one. So they said, look, you're going to have to do it. We hear your side of the story. We're very sorry. You seem normal, rational, everything. Anyway, so she's like, okay, I'll do the test. And guess what? She passed with flying colors. So that is interesting because she can switch this insanity on and off, it seems. Lori called her son Colby the afternoon after Charles was shot and told him he had a heart attack. She lied to her own son. She told Colby that Charles had a heart attack. Meanwhile, Alex had shot Charles in the chest twice. Okay. On August 30th, Colby actually saw Lori, JJ, and Tylee, and all seemed normal. August 30th. Think about that. Within a week, Tylee would be dead. Within three weeks from that moment, JJ also dead. Wow. Lori told Colby that she was moving somewhere cold. Yeah, you've never heard that? Wow. Okay, yeah. No surprises there. So what I want to show you is this. Look at this. Read the text messages Lori Daybell sent Charles, Charles Vello's sons after he died. Hi, boys. <laughs> Remember he had um, children from his previous marriage. Hi, boys. I have very sad news. Your dad passed away yesterday. I'm working on making arrangements, and I'll keep you informed of what's going on. I'm still not sure how to handle things. Just want you to know that I love you, and so did your dad. Ta-da! From friggin' Lori. Just like that. Just like that. And then, then they said, Lori, what happened? Where is he? And what happened? And she said, I'll call you when I can, bub. He's here in Arizona. <laughs> then they're like, where in Arizona? When did all this happen? How's JJ doing? What funeral homes he at? <laughs> and they say, Lori, what the, I'm sure that's the F happened. What the F happened? You can't just tell us our dad died and then disappear. You're not too busy to just let us know he died and then disappear. Lori, it's been three hours. You're not that busy. I don't care what you're doing. And then she goes, I'm so sorry you're so upset. I'm so upset too. I'm trying to get JJ ready for bed. Oh my word, people. Are we reading this together with our own eyes? What? I'm waiting to hear back from the medical examiner to make sense out of all of this myself. Please be patient with me. It's a crushing situation all the way around. I'm still trying to processing it too and what it means for JJ. What the hell? What about Tylee? What do you mean what it means for JJ? What is going on here? I know, right? And then when and where's the funeral? How did this all happen? I want an explanation. Question mark, two hours later, question mark. Laurie says, I'm still waiting, working on arrangements and sorting things out the best I can. I'll let you know when I know. Well, I'll let you know when I know. <laughs> and then, why aren't you telling me what happened? I've just asked numerous times. Just tell me. Question mark, question mark. And then, okay, Laurie, it's been three days. You let us know our father passed away over a text message. Three days, and we haven't heard from anyone. The only information we have is that one text from you saying he passed away. You disappeared after that. We need any information that you have. What happened? When did it happen? How did it happen? Where is he now? Are there any funeral plans? And can whoever be a part of it? And I'd be a part of it. We talk to him all the time. Right? Wait. And now he's gone. He was our dad, and we loved him very much. We deserve answers. Also, why have you been the only one to contact us? We haven't heard from Colby or Tylee. I know they are affected too. I called Colby recently too, but he didn't answer. Is JJ safe? And what does he know? I need to be kept in the loop about this all. This isn't a nonchalant topic. You can't just uh, you can't just throw a text at and oh wait. This isn't a nonchalant topic you can just throw a text at and be done with it. Right? Then these are your dad's wishes. Oh my word. 
when a murderer, okay, or someone allegedly involved in the crime says, these are your dad's wishes. He and I discussed this a lot over the years we have been together. My plan is to have him cremated as he wished and then take all five of you kids to Hawaii to spread his ashes. He did not want a funeral. He wants a celebration of his life. I've been overwhelmed, but I'm going to try to start these arrangements today. JJ is doing good, but he does not know his daddy's gone. Oh, you're right. He heard the shots outside, people. It's so tough because he doesn't really understand. He says daddy's in California working. I know how much he loves you boys and always has. I have a lot of things to do with the business and contacting people, and it's all so difficult. Today, I'm trying to put the business... Oh, wait, wait. Today, I'm trying to put up a memorial page on the funeral home website. I'll send the link to you when I have it. Yes, Lori, because at this point, what everyone's dying for is a link. <laughs> I'll send the link to you when I have it. I love you, and so does your dad. Oh, don't put words in anyone's mouth. The dad, of course, loved his children, but like, oh, when these people speak for the person that they've annihilated, ooh, that really gets me. I appreciate this information, but I will ask these questions again because I still haven't been given an answer. What happened? When did it happen? How did it happen? Where is he now? Is there a funeral? When is it? Who have you told about his death? Give me all the information you have, please. My brother and I deserve to know. Well, if you won't answer those questions, can we please have his watches and other stuff he always talked about and had around? Then she said, of course. So when it comes to objects, she's like, sure. Send me the address you want me to send you the stuff to. Oh, now she's cooperating. Kay is supposed to clean out the Houston house. I told her to let you and have whatever you want first. Then she could give you the have, I suppose, half, or give away the rest. I know he wanted you to have all that you want. Oh, my word. Guys, <laughs> can you believe it even? Can you believe it? Going back to our drawing. <laughs> Are you guys okay? <laughs> Yeah, the deeper we dive, <laughs> the worse it gets. Right, so continuing on. Wait. Oh, yeah, I think I just switched. Okay, yeah. So on August 30th is when Colby last saw Lori, JJ, and Tylee. All seemed normal. Lori told Colby, yeah, she's going to move somewhere cold. But didn't even tell him where she was going. And, of course, she was going to Rexburg, Idaho, to be with chad but not at first she rented a home at first a townhouse and she was just recruiting you know it was this big spiritual vision so laurie moved to rexburg where chad was she said she was getting a job there the closer laurie got to chad the more they referred to people as zombies who could be eliminated wow once chad declared someone as a zombie it meant that they could be a target to uh, die yeah uh -huh. they didn't want anyone to get in their way Chad and Lori said that when they got together, the entire group, I'm going to say it again. Okay, wait for it. Chad and Lori said to all these followers that they were getting, when they got together, okay, the two of them, everyone would experience salvation. So no one must stand in their way, which meant don't you interfere now when Chad's wife over here dies. Don't you even ask questions about my husband just dying. The kids, oh, they're going to disappear too. But don't you people get in our way because you know you want salvation. Wow. Okay then. So, uh, yeah, Chad's wife died in her sleep as we looked at before. September 2019, Lori moved into a townhouse in Rexburg, Idaho. She went on walks and held hands with Chad, who was still married to Tammy. People in the community went like, Aren't you, aren't you worried about your wife seeing all this? Like, what are you doing? They're like holding hands, like little freaking primary school couples walking around a field, huh? Walking around the field, like, look at us. We're a couple. We're an item, everyone. It's very childish what these people did. Evil and kind of childish, right? Like, horrible. Nightmare stuff. Okay. So um, <laughs> they believed that they were immortal. They had many past lives. Wow, now they're immortal too. Lori told Melanie, the friend, that Tylee was at BYU and that said that Tylee was actually a strong-willed teenager and barely spent time with her anymore. Melanie described the relationship between Lori and Tylee now as strained, which was a shift, right? 
So I think at that point, Tylee had enough. She's like, oh my word, like there's, my dad died and now Charles Vallo died. And now here we go again, running, 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 moving around. I mean, of course she's going to be a strong-willed teenager and she's going to be like, wait a minute, this mother that I'm idolizing is actually pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what started happening there. And of course, then Laurie had to make sure she was eliminated too. Horrible. So Tylee didn't like Chad at all. I'm going to put in some words and say that Chad gave her the heebie-jeebies. Normal response to Chad. Tylee and JJ were identified as zombies. And of course, they graded people according to light and dark. And apparently, you know, it seems to be a, a rating out of like five, according to what I've seen. I don't know. And they were like, ooh, like 4.3, 4.1, something like, oh, my word, just like so dark. They said that Tylee and JJ had been taken over by dark spirits, which is really evil to think it's a seven-year-old and a 16-year-old. And these friggin' people, Lori and Chad, are just like dark spirits, evil spirits. Oh, my word. Wow. Uh, Colby had no idea where Lori, Tylee, and JJ were. He could not get Tylee on the phone. He texted her. He showed videos and pictures of his daughter because he got married. He had a daughter. He's got two daughters now. Uh, there were texts that went back from Tylee's phone to Colby, okay, and uh, it, just just saying, I'm super busy, I can't talk right now, super busy, you can't this and this, but there were two transactions that I read that were also sent, like money was sent to Colby, so like, we love you, what? Yeah, imagine how much more they will come out in trial, I know, right? That's why we're preparing now. <laughs> we need to prepare for what's ahead, because this is just freaking crazy. And you can imagine why Chad is like laughing when the judge is reading him his charges because I think in his state of mind, he's thinking, dude, you can't sentence me to death. Like only God can do that. Like you can't judge me. No one can judge me. Because he's like laughing, right? He thinks it's funny, but it's not funny. Like, wow. Especially not when there's so many people that died around you too. Especially Lori, my word. Okay. And you're facing three charges at least of first degree murder. Goodness. Wow. Anyway, so um, Kay and Larry were also trying to get hold of Lori to talk to JJ. They really cared about JJ. Remember, they had him for the, his first years of life, and then they let Lori and Charles adopt um, JJ. They loved the kids, and then Charles Velo died, which would be Kay's brother. You see the picture? I hope it's helping. Kay's brother died. And so now it's like, wait, where's JJ? Like, what is going on here? I don't trust this, right? Yeah, can you imagine how the jurors will feel during this trial? And they're not even allowed to watch my videos <laughs> to get caught up. <laughs> That's bad, right? Oh, my word. So for weeks, Kay and Larry called, texted, emailed, Lori. No contact. Are we feeling laundry vibes all over again? Literal stonewalling them. They just wanted to know where JJ was. Now, September 8th, 2019, there was this day trip to Yellowstone National Park with Alex, Alex, Laurie, and the two kids. This was the last picture of Tylee alive. It was also the last picture of JJ alive, but JJ was seen on a door doorbell camera, which I'll show you now. That was on September 23rd. But on September 8th, they went to Yellowstone National Park, and at 6.30 p.m., they drove to Buckarouge Barbecue for dinner. Laurie and JJ had a photo together, and Alex and Tylee. And I've seen some family members cry about that and say, why were they separated like that? Like, what was going on? When the children were missing, remember, Lori refused to speak. The children were missing for, from September, okay? And remember, Lori had already packed up and left, yeah, around September. And Kay and Larry didn't know where they were. Colby didn't know where they were. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Only in June. That's a long time, many months, like nine months. Did I count that right? Nine months of them not knowing where the children are. So when they saw this last picture of them in Yellowstone National Park, everyone was really worried that something happened to them at Yellowstone National Park. So if you watch some, you know, other content creators talking about this case, um, because <laughs> this case is freaking huge, there was a lot of speculation around that time for those many months of like what happened to the children. And actually, I'd also like kind of casually looked at this case just like oh okay this is like whoa there's like a lot of moving parts here and that is one of the things that also stuck in my mind because I'm a very like visual person I'm like oh something happened to them at Yellowstone National Park but no 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 it was so much worse 
so much worse. Yeah, we're doing trial prep. What are we doing? <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking so much. I'm not looking at this. Yeah, we need a Triller sticker. We do need a Triller sticker, actually. <laughs> yes. All right. We continue on. I want to show you the... I'll show you that when we get to it, okay, with JJ. So now, Laurie's brother, Alex, and Laurie's niece, Melanie Boudreau, joined the Rexburg community. Okay, can you see at the bottom left here of my thingy there, Melanie and Brandon Boudreau? They joined this community, all living in Rexburg, Idaho. Two months after Laurie moved there, Melanie also moved there and rented a townhouse right next to Lori. This is the niece, not the friend. There's two Melanies of the story, okay? Melanie was in the middle of an ugly divorce and custody battle. Her husband, Brandon, who you can see pictured there, I've made them purple because he almost died. It's a hit that went wrong. Well, her husband, Brandon, thought that Melanie was part of a plan to kill him. Someone shot at him in the car. He was in the car, parking at his new home. They had a divorce, remember, ugly custody battle. He had parked and then someone drove past in a Jeep with a Texas number plate. Apparently someone, I don't know if you commented or emailed me, but you said the Jeep was actually Tylee's Jeep. Um, I believe that Charles Vallow bought the Jeep and then maybe gave it to Tylee. I don't know. But it was pretty much Charles Vallow's Jeep and, and or Tylee's Jeep. And someone was driving it a male, according to Brandon, and they think that it was, of course, Alex Cox. And it was a drive-by shooting, window smashed, bullet missed him by inches, so he survived that. And he's still alive now, he's fine, but like, whoa, that must be scary. Now, Alex worked as a truck driver. He had become absolutely enthralled with Chad Daybell's beliefs with these prophecies with these books with these everything just like laurie i think alex pretty much did whatever laurie did whatever laurie approved of and was doing he's like i want in it too there was a very incestuous vibe that i pick up from those two you know so it's almost like in spirit they are bonded and i don't know it's just like what she believes i believe she loves this guy so do i i'm in it i'm the third wheel always horrible because he really was always the third wheel he was always there anyway um, he felt that he was Laurie's protector. And of course, Chad built up that little friggin' insecurity in Alex and said, you are a protector. You must protect your sister. You are, in fact, in spirit, a protector. And so he took on that knightly role. He felt like a very big boy. Okay, Alex was 100% convinced of the zombie theory. He was driven to... <laughs> Seek out targets. Who should we eliminate first? Wow. Chad convinced Alex that Brandon was a zombie. Brandon Boudreau. So you can understand why Brandon was targeted. So. Do you think the incest vibe points to their father's speculation G style? I don't know. Sometimes in these types of, I mean, they were, they were raised in a joint family is what they say. So I'm not too sure exactly what that means. Okay, a joint family and in the LDS church. I don't know. I don't know. Speculatively, could be. Um, Tammy. Okay, so Tammy and Chad had been married since 1990. They said that they were sealed for eternity in the LDS church. So you could see that Chad's beliefs kind of, he broke away from the LDS church, you know? I just want to see here quickly. I hope you guys are still, yeah, we <laughs> I can't say we don't have too much to go. We still got some to go. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Does Lori read the Book of Mormon in jail? Does she only have the Bible? Um, she has all of Chad's books. <laughs> wow. I think Alex died on the sword. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well for Lori. Oh, my word. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, like a sacrifice. That makes sense. Okay. So. Tammy was fit and healthy. She made a Facebook post saying there was a man with a ski mask outside her window shooting with a paintball gun. Apparently it wasn't a paintball gun. It was another failed hit. So Alex clearly wasn't very good at shooting a gun, even though he was a big man. He shot Charles, but that was once allegedly standing up and then once standing over him. 
like the coward he was. Okay, moving on. <sighs> Alex, my word. Ten days after the painful incident, Tammy went to sleep and never woke up. Police said that Chad showed all the signs of a grieving husband. So that's interesting too. Like he was literally destroyed by this. I don't know about that. Maybe he just felt really bad. I think it would be guilt. <laughs> but he needed it to happen, you know, to facilitate his spiritually joining with frigging Lori. Now, autopsies are expensive, especially in small town Idaho. So guess what? There was no autopsy performed. And as we learned yesterday, Chad asked his five children, do you think we should have one? And they said, no, nah, I don't think so. So Tammy was buried. Everything was just like, wow, she died of natural causes. She died in her sleep is what they thought. Tammy died a month and a half. We're talking six weeks, people. A month and a half after Lori's move to Rexburg. Wow. Chad had said that Tammy would be okay with him being with Lori once she had passed. Hello, premeditation. People asked, what about like Tammy and Lori and what he told people when they asked about this affair, which is actually the layman's term for what was going on here, even though he calls it something else. Um, okay, what about this that you're doing? He said, no, Tammy would be fine with it. If I moved on with Lori, once she passes, she'll be happy for me. Wow. <clears throat> Okay, so <laughs> we continue on. I just want to check something. Sorry, I was just checking my mic sitting here. Yeah, we're still good. It's this grizzly dinner time. Okay. <laughs> we continue. So Tammy's life insurance was $430,000 that Chad promptly collected. Mm-hmm. Now, the followers thought that this was prophecy come true because, you know, they're kind of like, wow, you prophesied that she would pass on. Uh huh. And that Laurie and him would be together. They're like, amazing. Like they believed everything that Chad said at that point. Detectives, of course, found it suspicious. The community was like, wow. Detectives were like, uh oh, red flag. Two weeks after Tammy's death, Chad married Laurie in Hawaii. And we've seen those pictures from yesterday. There were no witnesses, no family, no friends, no guests. Just a photographer that they paid because they needed beautiful photos, of course. Wow. Lori believed that there would be earthquakes, disasters at the end of 2019. It would be the end of the world. So everyone would forget all about their wedding or their missing children. That's why they were so reckless. I mean, they must be sitting there still wondering, like, what is up with all this tribulation? Apparently, she told Colby, read the book of Job. I'm going to be suffering just like him. Now, if anyone's read the book of Job, of which, yes, I have. I'm a deep diver, people. <laughs> I've read every version of every religious book I could find from front to back. <laughs> a deep dive that, okay? I wanted to understand cults. <laughs> so not for this case. This was previously, before, <laughs> before studying this case. So I was always like, wait, what? Trying to understand all of that. So, yes. Uh, moving on. Yes, we will, we will look at some point at uh, Zulema. And Alex actually had another wife, Debbie, as well before. And whoo, the things she says are very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful photos for the beauty queen, says Robert. So Kay and Larry were desperate to find Lori, JJ, and Tylee. Kay noticed on her computer that, uh, whoa, wait, this is still logged into Charles's Gmail. And that's where she went there to look at the Gmail and was like, oh, my word, there's an address. This, there's an order being made. I mean, Charles was dead. Lori was ordering Malachite wedding rings for herself and Chad. Remember, she ordered the wedding rings 17 days before Tammy even died. And they were going to be delivered to Rexburg, Idaho. So Kay and Larry called the police, the state of Arizona, the state of Idaho police, to investigate the disappearance of Tylee and JJ. They were so, so worried about the kids. Yeah, Debbie has some tea to spill. Mm-hmm. Okay. We continue on. I know there's a lot of conspiracy surrounding this Malachite ring because people say that the 
stone in there it could poison people and it could have poisoned Alex and all this. But the thing is, you can buy that ring on Amazon like right now. So if it was so toxic, they wouldn't be selling it like that. So I don't really buy that theory, but I do agree that it seems like look at everyone dying around Lori. Some of them suspiciously of like heart attacks, blood clots, dropping dead, whatever. There's some sort of She's like Hannah McKay in Dexter. Remember Hannah McKay that uses all these toxic plants and people drop dead around her too? Natural things, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jay says, you kill me, girl. I want to understand cults. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> I wanted to understand them deeply, and now I do. <laughs> okay. So police showed up at Lori's house in Rexburg looking for JJ. They saw Chad and Alex, and they're like, what the heck is Chad Daybell and, and her brother doing here? Alex told the police that Lori was out and that JJ was safe out in Louisiana with Kay Woodcock. Police went, huh, red flag, everyone. Total red flag, because, like, Kay is the one who told the police to go there in the first place. Now there's Alex saying, oh, no, you should call Kay, because JJ is there. Mm-hmm. It's toxic if in powder form. Okay, are we talking about malachite? Okay, let me, um, my voice is going a little bit, so I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to do a quick commercial break. I'm going to have a look if I can find a picture of that ring for you while we do this, okay? So I'm sipping water, looking for the ring picture, and doing a quick commercial break. Welcome to Grizzly True Crime, established June 2021. Thank you for watching. Viewing Grizzly videos is a great source of support, and it's free. There are other 100% free ways to support Grizzly True Crime. Like, subscribe, and share. Other fantastic ways to support the channel would be, for example, becoming a member. Click the join button or the link below. During a live stream or premiere, you can buy a super chat or super sticker by clicking that button right there. The most direct way to support the channel would of course be through PayPal, link below. Join the Grizzly Patreon community for exclusive content. There are three tiers to choose from. I am a true crime author, so you could get my eBooks, audiobooks, or paperbacks, and I also offer you notebooks or journals. Buymeacoffee.com slash K. Need I say more? You know I love coffee. Get yourself some Grizzly merch, and if you post a picture of yourself in it, remember to tag me so that I can share it too. My merch shelf is now also active right below this video. If not, just click the link in the description box. If you haven't yet, join us Grizzlies on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. We have a really great community on all those platforms as well. Thank you so much for watching, and now let's get back to the live stream or video. Okay, and we are back. I will just quickly take this off. There we go. I found this for you guys, so you can see this ring. It reveals a lot in the timeline. I mean, 17 days before Tammy... Daybell died. Lori had bought this ring using Charles Bellow's Amazon account and possibly money as well for her and Chad. It's sickening, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lorraine, go to the party and drink, Grizzly. <laughs> People cutting and polishing it need to be careful. That's true. I've read that. You can't put the stone in water and drink on a regular basis either, but polished and worn is 100% safe. Used in fish tanks to clean and on farms as pesticides. Okay. I think Zulema's been married five times. Oh, my goodness. Pilot voice for sure. Wow. Gregory, thank you so much. We've entered the twilight zone, a very deep and dark black hole. Thanks, Kizla, for guiding us. <laughs> thank you, Gregory, for your $10 super sticker, for supporting the hard work that I did. Yes, to bring this to you. It takes friggin' hours and hours and hours and hours of research and actually structuring all of this to present it to you. So I really, really appreciate your support so much. Thank you also to my members, patrons, and everyone else for supporting me. Viewing is also a way to support me and hitting the thumbs up, of course. Okay, so this is the ring. That was, that's like literally Lori's hand, okay? Like they saw, whoa, she purchased this and there it is in a way with those photos that she 
had taken mm -hmm, with that photographer. Okay, so we go back to here. Okay, so we continue with the story. I'm going to try not to be too much longer, so just hang in there. Um, because I'd really, we're almost, we're kind of almost there. It's like four, four pages or so of my writing here. So police showed up at Lori's house in Rexburg looking for JJ. They saw Chad and Alex. JJ was apparently with Kay, which of course the police were like, red flag. Two days before Thanksgiving in 2019, Chad called uh, Lori's friend Melanie to tell her not to pick up the phone if the police called. Huh? Chad called Melanie, the friend, to say, if the police call you, do not pick up the phone. Of course, the police did call her and guess what? She listened to Chad initially. Lori said that JJ is one of her friends in Arizona. She told the police that JJ was with that friend Melanie, which is why they were telling Melanie not to pick up the phone. Uh, wow. She said that her husband has passed away. His family has since been horrible to her. So when police said, but Kay sent us here, they're like, oh, no wonder. Her, yeah, Charles Bellow's family, mm -mm, they've been horrible to me since my husband passed away. Wow. Lori said that Chad was one of Alex's friends. Did you hear that, everyone? Hmm? <laughs> I'm going to say it again in a moment. South Florida Gale, 1999 Super Sticker. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I know it looks a lot better on the actual stream. I'm sure you guys can all see it here on StreamYard that I'm using. I know it just looks like this, but thank you so, so much for the support. Thank you, Robert, uh, for your, all your hard work and preparation. So much preparation. <laughs> over time okay so to continue on i'm going to say that sentence one more time laurie told the police that chad was actually one of alex's friends not the guy she was buying you know rings to marry no not that guy chad was just one of alex's friends okay but at that point they already be <laughs> at that point they'd already been married for three weeks the police were like eye rolling at this point Police then, yes, they called Melanie. She didn't pick up. Laurie told police that JJ was watching Frozen 2 with Melanie in Arizona. It's a movie he really wanted to see. Melanie had taken him out. He's in Arizona watching Frozen 2. That's why she wasn't picking up the phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word. Thank you so much, David. Mr. David Robinson. <laughs> that is so sweet. We need to support you. But thank you so, so much for your $20 super sticker. That is so, so sweet. Oh, my word. Whoa, I'm honored. Okay, so police were like, whoa, guys, this is a huge red flag, okay? So they went back to Lori's house. <laughs> this is so hectic. When the police left first, Lori called Melanie to tell them, uh, to tell her that everything, everything was fine. They just asked her, oh, yeah, no, 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 hold on. When the police left, Laurie called Melanie and told, the, told her to tell the police everything was fine, asked her to get her camera out and just take some random pictures of kids. How crazy is that? <laughs> Melanie's like, well, that's not happening. Wow. So at that point, Melanie was like, what? Melanie said she was in shock. Okay. She told them uh, that she had not seen JJ since September. So she kind of told the police, you know what? I actually haven't seen him since September. Because now she's realizing, wait, I'm going to be implicated in whatever's going on here. No, no, no. I'm going to come out with what I know. Haven't seen JJ since September. Police went back to Lori's house with a search warrant. And guess what? Can you all guess? Where was Lori? Hmm? Gone. Every time I told you, this case is all about patterns. Every single time. The police show up there, question Lori. The next day she's gone. All packed up, ready. She's like a runner of note. My word. All personal items were gone. Lori told Melanie that she followed the Lord's instructions when she told police that JJ was with her. Because Melanie confronted her, and we all listened to that on Wednesday. Melanie confronted her and was like, I think what you and Chad are doing is really evil. I don't know what's going on here. I think you've been led astray. And then Lori says, no, she's followed the Lord's instructions when she told police that JJ was with her. A few weeks later, Rexburg PD put out two press releases and said that they were investigating a connection between Tammy's death and the two missing children. So they started going like, wait a minute. So Tammy died. The children are missing. Charles Vella was shot by the brother. Okay, then. They said that Laurie Vella refused to assist in the investigation and instead left the state with her new husband. 
Nice one, Laurie. Nice one. They were asking the public for photos or videos from Yellowstone National Park uh, from September 8th, 2019. Wow. It's got some, uh, gives me some chills because it's reminding me of that Gabby Petito case, huh? Anyway, that was also September. They were looking for Gabby. Wow. Uh, anyway, there was a $20,000 reward set for them by Kay and Larry. I hope this little visual chart is helping you guys. Is it? <laughs> Okay, so now we get to the Las Vegas portion. Alex was getting married to Zulema, and yes, I know, we got a deep dive. Zulema has got an entire interrogation. There's a lot of footage to look at in this case, and we'll look at all of it. If you guys are up for it, I'm up for it. I'm loving it. Alex got married to Zulema, and Melanie was getting married. Melanie Boudreau, not Melanie the friend. This Melanie that was married to uh, Brandon, the one that almost got shot by allegedly Alex. She got divorced from Brandon, and then she got married to Ian Pulowski. She met him on a Mormon dating app. I did not know that there were Mormon dating apps. Excuse my ignorance, but I didn't know that Mormons have dating apps. Interesting. Yeah, Zulema is not all there either. Zulema is an interesting one. I must agree. Right, so we continue on. So Alex married Zulema, and Melanie got married to Ian Pulowski, Melanie Boudreau in Vegas, at the Chapel of Love, on the same day. Again, weird vibes with this family. Now, Ian's ex, Natalie, pay attention. I didn't put it on the chart, but you could see Ian at the bottom there. Ian's ex, Natalie, and Melanie's ex, Brandon, started talking to each other. And Brandon told Natalie about Laurie's strange beliefs. Then Natalie told Ian because... Natalie then told Ian because she was worried about putting their kids in such a strange situation. She's like, this is not normal. This is a freaking cult. Like, what is going on here? So Ian and his ex-wife, Natalie, spoke to the Rexburg, uh, Rexburg PD and the FBI. <laughs> Luckily, you guys can watch the replay if you like what. <laughs> David's like, Mormon dating app? <laughs> There is a dating app for every niche group. What? A Mormon dating app. The Chapel of Love, Robert. That's where they got married. The Chapel of Love. Wasn't that in that movie, The Hangover? Hmm? I've seen that chapel. I went to Vegas. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. I did not get married there. <laughs> Moving right along. The FBI asked Ian, picture Ian at the bottom there, to wear a wire to record conversations with his new wife, Melanie. They wanted to know the whereabouts of JJ and Tylee. They thought maybe Melanie would know, obviously, because she lives right next door to Lori and she's like right in there in this cult, basically. So he wore a wire. I mean, this was his brand new wife and he was already like, I don't know what's going on here. So, okay, I'll wear a wire, which is quite interesting if you think about it. Anyway, not a lot of trust in the foundation of their marriage, right? I'm just saying, I'm glad he did that, but still. Melanie uh, Melanie and Ian had no fear about the kids' well-being. Okay. The FBI was looking into Alex's involvement in Charles Vallow's death. And then there was another 911 call. This time, the call was talking about Alex that had died. Now, I can't remember who made the call. Do you guys know? Wait. Who made the call? I've heard that call. We won't look at it right now. But uh, there was a 911 call saying that there was a man who just like dropped dead on the floor, basically. And that was Alex. He died less than a month after his wedding day. Alex died and police were baffled. This was a very important person in this case to figure out what was going on here. They actually said he was the most important part of the story. Alex told Melanie, Laurie's friend, that JJ would not ever be found. Okay, yeah, Zulema San. Okay, I was I knew that there was a, a male voice, but okay, Zulema San, thank you so much. That one slipped my mind for a moment. I'm like, wait, who made that call? Okay, thank you, Joseph Lopez. Thank you so much. All right. Now we go to January 2020. Laurie and Chad are in Hawaii. Three weeks before that welfare check we spoke about in the fall. Chad had emailed the property manager looking for a place to live on the island, describing them as a clean couple with no pets and no children. Premeditated much? 
Lori missed a court ordered appointment to present JJ and Tylee to Kay and uh, Larry for proof of life. It was a court ordered appointment. She just skipped it. They were devastated. It was horrible to watch their interviews, uh, you know, to see them waiting and waiting and waiting and Lori just not showing up with the kids. All they wanted to see was JJ and Tylee just to know, are they safe? Are they alive? Chad, um, okay, hold on. Lori was arrested and then escorted back to Idaho from Hawaii. Chad remained a free man for then. Now, on March the 6th, 2020, Lori walked into a Madison County courtroom for her arraignment. The bail was set at $5 million. She had a whole bunch of um, charges, child desertion, false information about a missing child. But of course, what I read to you at the beginning of this episode was the indictment and the new charges they're facing. On October 1st, remember that, that I showed you um, in the video I played earlier? That that you see the storage unit, the two people walking around, was actually on October 1st, Lori rented a storage locker under the name Lori Ryan, and police served a search warrant on it in November. And in the storage locker were all the kids' stuff, which is very, very sad to think about. Uh, so they were seen on surveillance footage carrying boxes and black duffel bags. Mm -hmm. It was a 10 by 10 foot storage locker. Again, I'm getting laundry vibes. Inside, everything one might expect to find in a child's bedroom. There were photos of the kids in the storage unit too, bicycles, baseball, gloves, you know, toys, all sorts of things. Quite hectic. What did I miss? Yes, this is the thing. I think everyone, including the viewing public, thought the kids were tucked away in some end of the world camp in the mountains somewhere. People did think they were like in an underground bunker. They thought they were in a camp somewhere. They, no one really thought that they were going to find them where they did, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it's like, why? <laughs> Beliefs and selfishness. Wow. Okay. So Chad sent his wife, Chad, okay, sent his wife, Tammy, a strange text about burning tree limbs in their fire pit and a few other odd background chores. And this was on September 9th, the day after that Yellowstone trip. Okay. Detectives noticed this text specifically because it was very detailed and described um, shooting and burying something in the backyard. So they were like, this is pretty sinister. Like, even though he's talking about shooting a raccoon and burying a raccoon in the backyard, the way that he's explaining all this to his wife, red flag. September 23rd, 2019, GPS records put Alex Cox in the backyard. Wow. Of Chad's property by the fire pit. This was before Lori and Chad were married and before Tammy had died. So just picture it for a second. Before Lori and Chad were even together, Chad was living with his wife at this property and their five children. I don't know if all the children, I don't know the exact ages, if they're still all living at the house, but living there with his wife. And he gets Lori's brother to come on over and bury something in the backyard. Later, we know what that is. Hmm. Chad, the professional grave digger. Right. Okay. So now JJ unexpectedly missed school the next day. He missed school on September 24th. And Lori met with JJ's principal. Now we're getting Chris Watts vibes. The next day and unenrolled him and said he would be homeschooled. She then told JJ's babysitter that her services would no longer be needed. Again, Chris Watts vibes. So now I want to show you what I was going to show you earlier, which is this is the last footage of JJ Bello on, I believe this one's on September 23rd.
He was just playing. He was happy on this day. And man, what they did. We don't know the exact details, but we know how he was found, and it's horrendous. Damn, East Idaho News, giving us frights over there. <laughs> um, the presenter from East Idaho News. East Idaho News is friggin' brilliant. If you haven't checked it out yet, I would highly recommend it. It's the best coverage of this case, I would say. Um, besides me, of course. Okay, no. <laughs> but really, Nate. Yesterday I said Nick, okay? But Nate Eaton is the investigative journalist. He's been working this case. He's covered every detail all along the way with interviews and everything. I would highly recommend. So I just want to continue. I wonder if they gave him some sort of sleeping medicine. Well, I freaking hope so, based on how he was found. It's absolutely terrible. Okay, so we're almost there. Hang in there, guys. We're almost there. And then we've got Alex's comedy show to still see a little bit. <laughs> wow. Okay, so then on June the 9th, 2020, around 50 law enforcement personnel, they actually said maybe up to 100 people, arrived at Chad Daybell's property. He sat in the car. Mm -hmm. Laurie called him at some point. There was a call. I don't know if you've heard that call. And uh, one of Chad's sons let them in and led them to Chad to, Chad to serve the search warrant. Three hours into the search, Chad got a phone call from Laurie from jail. Police were looking for a clandestine grave. Cadaver dogs, blue tarps, pink tape was seen, which we looked at yesterday on that slide. Do you remember it? Uh, if not, wait, I'm going to add this one now. This is yesterday's presentation. That was the last picture of them. Oh, this couple. Oh, my word. This, this is what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Wow. So they said there was a thin layer of soil, three white rocks, thin layer of wood, paneling, and then they found remains. Chad started his car and actually drove away, but he didn't get far. Police arrested him. The sheriff called a news conference, and it was revealed that the human remains belonged to Tylee and JJ. Mm -hmm. So let me find that phone call for you if I can. Just hold on one second. Lori calls Chad. <laughs> Wait, I think it's this one. June the 9th call. Yeah, I think it's this one. Okay. They call from and take their Okay, CLH says, I cannot understand a word, so she says, hey, babe, and he's like, hello, he's sitting in the car, right, and she's like, how are you, and he's like, they're searching the property, and then um, she's like, the house, and he's like, the property, 
And so he's explaining like, oh, holy moly, they are literally busy searching everything. And then she says, um, can I call you back or can you call me back or whatever? We'll listen to it now. And then he's like, you can try to, because I think he knew at this point, it's over. Spanish. Interesting. <laughs> Look at him. That's him. She's like, yeah. So glad you called. This was Chad Daybell. What do you want me yeah, to do? <laughs> Can I do for you? Okay. I'm feeling pretty calm. I would call Marco. There's Kay and Larry in the background there. Talk to Marty. I did call him. Yes. So he knows what they're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Call mm -hmm. from somebody else who needs to talk to you. I love you so much. Sis. Okay, I love you. Should I try to call you later? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, you can try, yeah. I'll answer if I can. Love you and we'll talk soon. Okay, baby. I love you. Okay. Love you. Good night. Hi, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl sends me documents in the potato case. Thank you so much for becoming a member and supporting the channel. I hope during the trial they sit in the front row. They said that they want to, this is now Larry and Kay said they want Lori to feel them breathing down her neck. They want to be right there in the front. So, of course, if you missed it yesterday, if I remove this one, this is what we shared yesterday. This is um, the pet cemetery where Tylee's remains were found. And at the back, the way back there in that indentation is, I believe, where JJ's remains were found. Tylee was dismembered and burnt. So that's horrendous. JJ was still wearing his red pajamas. He was wrapped in garbage bags. He'd been duct taped, had a white bag over his head. And yes, he was buried in the backyard too, covered with rocks and plywood. Horrendous. So there you could see Chad initially, he wasn't laughing there in the clip we just saw. Um, but yes, Idaho prosecutors will be seeking the death penalty against Chad Daybell. He was seen laughing when facing the judge. We've gone through all the charges that himself and Lori are facing. There's the happy couple at the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It's absolutely sickening to think that those pictures were taken right after allegedly murdering two children. Alex dropped dead. Tammy murdered. Wow. So there's Lori. And yesterday we looked at a new mugshot, which I think is right here. Oh, that hair is done. She got some makeup on a little bit, but that's a hard. I think she's 48 now. Oh, man. Oh, man. Those kids deserve the world and they got unalived. I know, right? Here again, I say, Grizzlies, hit the like if you enjoyed this presentation. It takes hours to research and make these for you, so your support means the world to me. Okay, so one more time, I'm just going to quickly show you this just as a recap. Um, so you can see now, I hope you understand. See, now the second time you see it, you're going to get it. Lori's in the middle of all this. Chad Daybell, the two pictures in color, they're alive. Everyone else around them, dead, just about. 
We've got Joe Ryan, husband number three, died in April 2018 of a heart attack. But of course, his sister's thinking, whoa, that's it, it could be foul play. That's the lady with the YouTube channel. Tylee Ryan was his biological daughter and Lori's daughter. She died September 9th, 2019. Early hours of the morning is what I'm reading. If I read everything, it seems like they were very busy at 2.45 in the morning, which is quite interesting given their religious beliefs that they're doing this witch's hour type thing. I find it very odd, you know, but uh, yeah, they thought they were slaying zombies, which is horrendous. So Tylee died as well. We've got Charles Vello, husband number four, shot by Alex Cox um, twice in the chest. JJ Vello, he died uh, what is believed to be on around September 23rd. That door camera footage was the last scene of him, as well as, of course, the picture two weeks before from Yellowstone National Park. And so to think that he was alive two weeks after Tylee was murdered, his dad had just, uh, Charles Vello had just been shot. Now his sister's also gone. It it must have been an excruciating two weeks for him. Even though he was playing there on the camera and everything, you know, he seemed okay. But it must be like, it must be so much to take in. Shame. He was only seven. And then Tammy Daybell died October 19th, 2019 in her sleep. But then her body was exhumed. Her kids have said she was asphyxiated. We'll probably learn more details in the trial, which is expected to start in January of 2023. And then, of course, one day after her body was exhumed, Alex Cox dropped dead. You can see the little handcuffs are the two people that are in jail now because of it. I think that you have looked at this slide enough, right? You understand what's going on here. I'm hoping so. Hoping it all makes sense now. Um, that's Annie Cushing, Joe's sister, Tylee's aunt, and she's got the YouTube analytics. And man, I'll have to look at the chat again unless you put it now. What is the other one? Murder on her lips or what is it? The other YouTube channel she's got. And we've got Krisha K. Easton, K. Woodcock's daughter, Charles Vallow's niece, JJ Vallow's aunt, and she's got a YouTube channel, Difficult Research. So if you want to check that out, she also covers the case. We've got Chad Debel, Tammy Debel, obviously no longer with us. Chad facing the death sentence. So that would mean if he actually gets the death sentence, <laughs> Laurie would pretty much be involved in the deaths allegedly because husband number three we're not sure but like of three husbands husband number one and two got away husband three four and five wow interesting right so those are the children garth emma seth uh sorry i went a bit fast there garth dabel emma murray seth dabel lee murphy and mark dabel and then laurie Vallow's friends i'm showing you this again because you're gonna have to Keep doing the homework on this. Refresh your mind because the, the more we go, the more we peel the layers, the more we have to all understand what's going on in this case, right? Because we're going deeper and deeper into it now. So we've got Lori Bellow's friends. Uh, one was from high school. So it was interesting to hear how she described Lori and how actually Lori turned out in the end. April Raymond, a uh, Hawaii friend, said Lori's 58-day visit to her. She's never seen Lori so chaotic and what she described as manic. Um and she said, yeah, Laurie was like a different person entirely. And then we got Melanie Gibb, the Gibster, as we refer to her now, right? The Gibster uh, introduced Laurie to Chad Daybell, knew about their plans, and also believed in zombies. Okay. Are you going to show the police interviews after Charles was shot? Um... Yeah, eventually. Those are very, very long, but I do want to, I'm pretty much kind of, I'm trying to like summarize everything so we're all up to speed. It's almost like a course, <laughs> like a course in the case so that when the trial happens, we'll all know. But I do want to show a lot, yes. Melanie Fibster, the Gibster. I call it the Gibster. <laughs> Melanie Fibster. Okay, sorry, we're getting snarky now, aren't we? It's snark o'clock, everyone. Um, and then what else do we have? We've got, of course, the Red Flag Gang. It's just I call them this because I'm like, these three were all up to something, okay? There's so many people that died around them, and, of course, Alex Cox then also died, as someone described, probably, you know, falling on the sword for his sister. Who knows? But he had actually been in jail for assaulting husband number three with a taser, and I'm going to show you a little comedy clip because he actually jokes about it. He was a radio DJ, stand-up comedian, a truck driver, and a monsieur. I say monsieur because he gave Zulema, his new wife of only one month, a massage in which she 
kind of went in and out of consciousness. She doesn't understand what happened. She felt like her days were limited, felt like maybe he was conspiring to kill her that day. And detective said she was lucky to survive that. At that point, he says he's a massage, not therapist. Like that's why I say masseur. And then, of course, Lori, hairstylist, yoga instructor, stay-at-home mom, a juice bar, all that kind of stuff. Really just a life insurance and murder expert, really. It's just murder, life insurance, collect, collect, like honestly. Criminal. Okay, and then Chad Daybell, copy editor, Symmetry Sexton. That's like a weird leap, right? <laughs> From copy editor to Symmetry Sexton. That's probably, that's a money decision. Sales manager, managing editor, sales exec executive, and then a self-published author. I do still want to show you one more thing before we wrap this up, which would be this. These are his books, Chad Daybell. They're still for sale right now, which is quite shocking to think about. Amazon, of course, <laughs> they don't care to take it down. They're just like, well, there it is, self-published. The Great Gathering, a novel, The Celestial City, The Rise of Zion, One Foot in the Grave. Mm. Interesting. He says, The Strange but True Adventures of a Cemetery Sexton. Living on the edge of heaven. He has got days of fury. Now listen, don't you talk about my cat that way, okay? Happy Haggies, thank you so much for your three pound super sticker. Oh my word, your profile picture's so cute. Okay, he's got, uh, you guys all know Fury's my cat's name, so that's why I say that. Days of fury. No, 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 no. Keep my cat's name out of your mouth, Chad. Okay, evading Babylon. Martial law. Reclaiming liberty. Mm -hmm. All while murdering people, hello. Allegedly. An errand for Emma. I think he was talking about, wait, there was a time when he called, this is a book about him, this is a book about him and Laurie from what I've read. He just changed the names <laughs> to something and Emma, right? Chasing Paradise, my word. Through the Eyes of John, the Aaronic Priesthood, the Keys of the Kingdom, the LDS Top 5 Charts, Baptism, Entering the Path to Eternal Life. He was very busy, huh? A prophet in Palmyra. Ironic priesthood. Of course, these are some audiobooks. And then Evading Babylon. This is not a promo for his books, people. This is just showing you his books. I just wanted to show you. I'm not promoting them at all. Richard, thank you so, so much for your $25 super sticker. That is so sweet. And thank you so much. Really, was it? But he referred to Laurie. Did he not refer to her as Emma or something like that at some point? Like in some kind of fantasy? I can't remember. There was something about him writing something and changing the names and really writing about Laurie. Okay, JJ was by the pond. Mm -hmm. Okay, for map time, we've got to get very accurate on where and what, 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 what. So I hope that you enjoyed that. I'm going to show you now um, Alex's comedy skit because he jokes about hubby number three who dropped dead from a heart attack. However... Alex told his first wife that he wanted to start a fight with Joe Ryan, Laurie's hubby number three, so that he could kill him and claim self-defense. How's that? I think that's hectic. Is it the right of their church to sell the literature? Well, he's a self-published author, so that's the problem. It's his, it's his publishing company, and... He's self-published. It's by Chad Daybell. So like my books too. See, if if I go anywhere, <laughs> not to prison, if I go anywhere, my books will still just be on there. That's the thing with Amazon, especially in the self-published industry. It's a very saturated little market that, my word. But they just stay on there, you know? Let's buy all these books and burn them. Hectic. Okay, so I'm going to put this up quickly. Sangria, how you guys doing? Nice. You guys look good. Maybe you wish I was straight. <laughs> my name is Alex Cox. When I was in the eighth grade, I actually learned that my real name was also my porn star name. So, uh, Driving up tonight, I drove out from uh, Queen Creek and uh, it took me 11 hours. Apparently all the snowbirds don't live out of state because I was behind this lady and I'm just thinking I would really love to drive this lady into a ditch. You know, it felt better. And I'm thinking, should there be a law that if your maximum driving speed is lower than Nancy Pelosi's IQ, 
You shouldn't be driving anymore, should you? <laughs> he agrees. He's just like, I don't know what you're saying. Um, we don't have that for a while. What do we have? Photo fucking radar. Give it up if you hate photo radar. I am with you. I am with you. I, uh, I was late for an appointment last month. I went home and asked on the 60. Yesterday in the mail, they sent me one of those photo uh, albums. <laughs> Fuck, that shit adds up. I'm lying. <laughs> He's got a very dirty sense Who's of humor. I had a picture taken two days ago. Did you? Were you topless like I was? <laughs> yeah. I had the battery, uh, the lighter, and the clamps. Delightful. <laughs> Worth every penny. You want to try it? Yeah, you'll want to put one down there. Remember, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Horrible. Oh my word. Oh, oh you're lefty. Clockwise, Just wait for the, wait for the Joe Ryan part. Oh, fuck. Can we just stop for gas on the way up here? Stop at I-17 on Camelback. And uh, is the economy that bad? Some people come up and try and sell you shit while you're getting gas. I'm like, uh, no thanks, I'm not looking for a uncovered $20 blowjob, but uh, appreciate it, officer. Thanks. <laughs> need that. I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to do a little jail time last year. I'll confess to you guys. You ever had something that you knew was the right thing to do, but it turns out that later on it was uh, a felony? <laughs> This is a true story. I found out that my ex-brother-in-law was a, a pedophile, so I took... Stand by. He's talking now about Joe Ryan. Okay, listen. This is the guy that he told his first wife he really wanted to start a fight with him so that he could kill him and claim self-defense. Now, in, over here, in any case, he's making jokes about it. Okay. Okay, stun gun, and I discharged it right in his nutsack. <laughs> and, and I did. And in Texas, uh, that's a felony. <laughs> get a handshake or a parade or something. Uh, I got probation. So they arrested me here and they held me out here in jail and I learned something when I was here at Maricopa County Jail. I learned that I was the only white guy in there that did not consider crystal meth one of the four major food groups. Remember the last guy here from Superior? Meth capital of the fucking planet. I think they invented it there. Anyway. Superior, not him. She's just You're mean. Not that mean, I'm a felon. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so uh... I think we've heard enough from him, am I right? He makes a joke about meeting Britney Spears and giving her a gift. And he said she was really confused by this gift because it was underwear. And I'm like, shame. Like Britney Spears has been through enough. Like what the heck? Probably not even true, but okay, yes. Well, yeah, what's the hook? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where's the hook to remove him from the stage? Thank you so much uh, for the coffee, Melinda. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, of course, uh, giving this video a like, sharing it. Either you could use the share button to share it to Twitter, Facebook, Reddit. We have a Reddit community too. Or, so like it, share it, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. Those are all the cool ways, free ways you could support me. If you want to support the channel, um, you could become a member. You could join Patreon. I shared this um, indictment actually earlier with my patrons. Not early enough. I wish I shared it even earlier, but I shared it with my patrons so they could read through it first. Um, it's almost like sometimes we, we're a bit of a study group, huh? We look at things <laughs> beforehand there. Um, or sometimes I put my scripts up there and things like that. So, but thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you for being here. My voice actually held up. Not because I got a cold or anything. It just my voice held up today after all this talking, all these notes handwritten for you with love. <laughs> Want to buy my hand? No, I'm just kidding. No one's buying my handwritten notes. These are like, one day I'll look back on these and be like, remember that. Like I wrote all the stuff for you to make sense of this whole case. Oh my word. And there's still much more. So we did layer one and layer two. It's called part one and two. If you missed part one, please do go check it out. Um, Thank you so much, uh, Tammy. You say great show. Yeah, Patreon is the bomb. It's a really great little community. I think uh, there's just, just under 200 of us on there. So it's really nice, um, special. 
And over there, I also share like walking around in the forest, you know, walking around castles in the Netherlands, canals in the city, things like that. Just as that kind of like beyond true crime. There's true crime and there's beyond true crime as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope that you guys, I did not enjoy Alex's comedy skit either. Mm -mm, no. Hope you enjoy the presentations um, and things like that. And I will see you very soon. Uh, make sure you set the reminder for the next one. It's coming up on Wednesday. We're going to look at this Gibster, okay? <laughs> I call her the Gibster. We're going to have a look at Melanie Gibb, the friend of Laurie Vallodaybell, who actually, you see, I thought, wow, okay, she made a bit of a turnaround and she spoke to the police. But really, when you think about it, like, but wait a minute, she knew all about the zombies, the beliefs, the, the plans they had, that they were going to be together. She was like fully in this cult, watching all this happen around her, which unfortunately, of course, included getting rid of zombies, some of those being children. So that is very bad. That is something quite hectic. We're going to look at that. Um, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Happy long weekend to you. Or if you're watching from the future, I hope you have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. And I will see you in the next one. Okay. <laughs>